30 years and will, by tooth or claw, hang on to that with all he's worth. That is a phenomenally big difference. Bevin's campaign has also suffered some stumbles, and it's been targeted by tough ads from the McConnell camp and its allies. Jerry Bodlander, Louisville, Kentucky. California Governor Jerry Brown says the state is getting ready for what could be a very dangerous wildfire season. Ed Donahue has the latest on those devastating California wildfires. Brown says they are getting ready for the worst. We don't want to anticipate before we know, uh, but we need uh, a full complement of firefighting capacity. On ABC's This Week, Brown said California is on the front lines of climate change and very expensive investments and adjustments will be needed. People are going to have to be careful of how they live, uh, how they build their homes, and what kind of vegetation is allowed to grow around them. California's firefighting agency went to peak staffing in the first week of April instead of its usual start in mid-May. I'm Ed Donahue. AT&T says it is buying DirecTV for $49 billion. Jackie Quinn reports on the highly controversial merger of the two telecom giants. AT&T would create the second largest pay TV company in the U.S. with its plan to acquire DirecTV. The move would increase AT&T's base of video subscribers and make it more competitive with Comcast and Time Warner Cable, who agreed to a merger earlier this year. AT&T would move its existing UVerse TV subscribers into video over satellite, freeing up bandwidth on its telecommunications network. The government has to review the deal, which could close in about a year. I'm Jackie Quinn. And trouble is brewing for your morning coffee. David Melendi reports on the government's latest plans to stop a new coffee plant disease. A plan is percolating in the U.S. Agency for International Development to help Central American farmers fight a devastating coffee disease and keep the price of your morning cup from spurting higher. The agency today plans to announce a $5 million partnership with Texas A&M University's World Coffee Research Center to try to eliminate a fungus called coffee rust. It's caused more than $1 billion in damage across Latin America and is especially deadly to Arabica coffee, the bean that makes up most high-end specialty coffees. It's already affecting the price of some of those coffees in the United States. David Melendi, Washington. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. name is Osimo. Honda has unveiled its new human-like robot that the team says is designed to run a non-competitive half marathon and then smugly brag about it afterwards. Project leader Kenji Saito calls the robot very aggravating, adding, quote, we knew how to create a robot that could run great distances at high speeds. The challenge was to build a bot that would be impressed with its own minor achievement. The robot even believes it could run a full marathon if it wanted to, but it's just doing this to stay in shape and have some fun. If I wanted to, I probably could have played college football. Aiming to make the android as realistically human as possible, scientists installed sensors to register derisive comments and eye rolls from annoyed co-workers as genuine interest in its self-centered blather. The team noted that the irritating robot could be useful in medical fields as well. Already, Osmo has pestered scientists into sponsoring it to run a 5K in Cape Cod this summer. To date, it's raised over $700 for leukemia research. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. All you have to do is dial in toll-free. That number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on the site. Those other talk show hosts charge you for access to their websites, and we will give you for free what more than likely what they're charging you for at those other sites. So go and check it out. Get interactive at Free Talk Live. Dot com. Now, uh, joining you tonight, you have Ian and Mark as normal on Mondays, but things are a little bit different in the third chair. I want to welcome a special guest co-host, Carlos Morales. Welcome. Thank, thanks for having me on. Newer mover to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. I think the last time we had you on was from the Liberty Forum, which I believe was pre your move to New Hampshire. Yeah, I was actually, I went to the Liberty Forum, I looked around and thought, well, I need to be here instead. So af about a month after the Liberty Forum, I decided to uh, make the move out to New Hampshire. Which was a huge decision because you had just moved previously or not too long previously to Asheville, North Carolina in search of a Liberty community. 
and uh, you must have been really blown away at Liberty Forum. Yeah, it was it was a beautiful uh, thing to see. You know, I guess there was there was over a thousand people at that event. Was there I, that I, many? You know what? I could be incorrect on that number, but I, I just, have not heard. I don't know, Mark, if you've heard from any of the organizers. I know normally it like pans in the area of five to well, seven hundred or so. Well, at least in New Hampshire, just knowing the the amount of numbers of individuals who are libertarian. Uh, leaning at least uh, was just really, really blew my mind away. And a big thing about the Free State Project that I guess doesn't get brought up enough by at least other people is how beautiful it is to have a great sense of community with like-minded individuals where you can go to, say, a, a meeting or something like that, say, at a bar with 40 other people, and no one's going to look at you weird whenever you bring up, you know, maybe Obama's not the best kind of president. or may, And you know what? Bush wasn't very good either. Right. So you can, you know, it, to kind of move outside the right-left uh, right paradigm and instead go towards a more reasonable approach. Although yeah. other people call it extreme. And everybody's, right, and everybody within the, the group, typically in the Free State Project, is already on board with those ideas. Now, there may be other issues on which they don't all agree, like, you know, what's the best way to raise a child or something like that. Uh, but for the most part, they generally agree that aggressing against people is unacceptable it's pretty insane that we have to move to uh, have to move to another state to have more than 30 people around me say yeah killing and stealing is not really a good thing yeah it is insane but, but that's it's the, the reality that's the world we live in <laughs> yeah. uh and that's why mark and i moved here in 2006 uh, as part of the free state project it's why over 15,000 people have pledged to make that very same move you and uh, even though you just moved this year you're still an early mover yeah um anybody that moves now for the free state project is an early mover because we want to reach that 20,000 signer goal we're at over 15,500 now so we're on the way and uh, and getting there i think we'll be there within the next two years maybe sooner if things start to ramp up toward the end but uh very exciting because then once the 20,000 is reached then all those 20,000 have a five-year window of time in which to make the move. So all of the things that you've seen here already and the wonderful community that we have, these are just the early birds. So it's really hard to imagine. It's it's hard to fathom what all will be possible when another you know, 19,000 or 18,000 people make the move. But you can kind of get a glimpse of it if you go to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's, it's coming up uh, near the end of June, 20, the 22nd through the, the 29th. And it's going to be your first one, right, Carlos? No, this is actually my second oh, Pork really? Fest, although this will be the first time that I'm actually speaking at uh, Pork Fest. Uh-huh. So. so that's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. Yeah, we'll be there broadcasting live every single night from the Porcupine Freedom Festival. And that is a great excuse to come to New Hampshire and check it out during the summertime see the beautiful white mountains incredibly beautiful place rogers campground is where it takes place and the price of the tickets has gone up uh it's now 75 dollars to get the entire week at the porcupine freedom festival i heard i have heard i don't know if this is true i've heard that it'll be even more maybe as much as 100 the day you know like if you just show up that week if you don't buy the tickets in advance you're going to pay the most so you can still get your pork fest tickets online through the end of this month at porkfest p-o-r-c F-E-S-T dot com. Now, New Hampshire isn't perfect. There are some problems, some big problems, but it's probably the freest place of the United States to live, though it's still interesting to look at what's going on in, in the other places and see, you know, how's, how are certain things working? How about the uh, marijuana legalization in Colorado? It's been on a lot of people's minds recently. And, you know, they, they, of course, in 2012 voted with a... Re- um, what is it? A resolution, a voter resolution, Refer- referendum. referendum. Anyway, they they voted to legalize cannabis in Colorado and Washington, and they put that into effect in Colorado earlier this year. And I actually have a story here. We can get into it here in a moment about you know it's been it's been a few months. Let's look back. How's this going? Yeah, I mean we should hear about the fire in the streets, the uh, you know the earth cra- cra- cracking wide open. Right. What are the murder rates like now that marijuana is legal in uh, Colorado? So we'll get into that here. Uh, in a moment, actually, we do have uh, phone lines available to you at 855-450-FREE. But unfortunately, I have lost the connection to my phone server. So I don't know if our board operator is is monitoring us actively. You're welcome to put Lot on the line. We did have uh, Lot on from Michigan City. I have no way of actually putting him on at the moment. Normally, we have this little uh, internet thing that'll allow us to do that for ourselves. So I'm not hearing lots, so I'm guessing that means the board op is not paying attention to us at the moment. The toll-free number uh, is 855-450-FREE. Oh, he says the, the whole phone system just crashed, so that would be why 
Uh, he is paying attention. It's just the hardware is broken. So let's jump into it, shall we? From Colorado. You can still call on Skype. Our username yeah, is true. LRN.FM. Thanks for the reminder there. We do have username LRN.FM on Skype. And in point of fact, uh, we do have Aaron there as well. Uh, Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Ian. Uh, that was fast. I was uh, calling about the other night when you guys were talking about predestination. Uh, is it predeterminism and such? Uh, determinism, I think, was the word yeah, yeah. that was being discussed. This sort of idea that uh, that everything is predetermined as far as what happens, and that you know what you do is based on the experiences that you've had, and that you couldn't possibly make uh, another choice. You have to pick whatever it is that you pick. I wasn't around for this My discussion um, that I recall. I don't recall this discussion. Yeah, I think it was Friday night. So um, I guess I would ask, who's de- who's making the determinations here? Is this uh, sort of uh, a genetic determina- determinism, or are we talking about sort of God deciding uh, who's determined, what's determined, and what is it? I guess it would um, depend who you ask. Yeah, they were talking, I guess on Friday they were talking about uh, being an atheist and also being a f- person who believes in free choice. But I guess my discussion was about how that's possible. I guess I don't, I see a contradiction there that if you believe that all that is is physical and the physical laws, then how can you also believe that you're not governed by the same physical laws that say a ball rolling down a hill is? Well, it also has to do with the neurology. Uh, okay, so if you there's a number of different neurologists who speak about the, the issue of free will. And of course, so there's nothing that really exists outside of genes, environment, and the experiences that we've had, right? There's no like there's no extra well, soul or something in there. I mean, or at least that's what that's, that, that's my that's yeah, my statement in regards to that. So so right. I'm I'm the, the the local atheist here in this in this you community. You would be the atheist in this room. In, yeah. in this room right now. So when it comes to the topic of free will, though, it is a rather complicated subject. My issue in regards to many determinists is that they still use terminology that people who are free will proponents use. So they say like, well, because of determinism, we should choose to do these other things or think about things in a different way, which is of that's. That's these kind of statements that someone who believes in actual free will would make. So I guess the ter- the terminology is really the issue here. I'm I, I like to think about it like uh, atoms with electrons. You have a probability that an electron is going to exist at any one given point. Certain things are more likely than others, and I think with people it's the same way. When you approach an issue, you have a more likely choice and a less likely choice, and maybe you t- turn t- and some. You- some options are just exceedingly small, so you completely disregard them. But then the question becomes, even in quantum mechanics, whether or not you believe there is an underlying order to it, whether or not there's laws that govern it at a fundamental level, that whether or not you can understand in any better terms than what's most likely to happen, whether or not you believe that there is something that governs it all in an absolute way. Well, whenever you're talking about repeatability and probability is basically all we're going on. We're not for sure of many different things. We, we just kind of live off of basic assumptions, day-to-day things. So we know that some, if we drop something, it's most likely going to fall. So we're just running on probability. That's a pretty high probability, whereas yeah. um, it seems like free will, there's a there, there's a, a much larger chance of chaos um, in you know somebody you know given in a certain circumstance. Well, are you saying, Aaron? I'm still not clear on where, what your position is. So if you want to hang on, we can bring you back here in a moment. Are you saying that there are certain things that if you knew all of them, you would be able to predict someone's choice? Gold Bond presents Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm hanging out with my Gold Bond buddies, and they're like, "Shaq, Shaq, great job with the Gold Bond powder spray. People love it." So I'm soaking in the good vibes, kicking off my shoes. Next thing I know, they're coming out with a new foot powder spray. Boom. Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body. And new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Summer is almost here, which means it's time to get out and play. And at the Guitar Center Memorial Day Sale, you'll find some of our lowest prices of the year on the best gear throughout the store. And with deals like Toka Djembe drums for only 19 bucks, or Squire Stratocaster electric guitars for only 89 bucks, or a digital reference mic for just 10 bucks, the only question is, where will you play? Guitar Center's Memorial Day Sale, now through Monday, in-store and online. 
Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. It's obvious the government expects people to pay taxes, whether or not they have a law. They are a band of marauders. They are a violent band of thugs, and in my opinion, they're a group of strangers. I mean, if I all of a sudden wrote up an invoice for you, Robert, and send it to your house saying, you owe Free Talk Live $5,000 this year, or if you don't pay us, we're going to send some people after you to punch your face in. Would you cut me a check? I mean, because that's essentially what they're doing. That's essentially what the IRS does. They write a bunch of strangers, people they don't know, an invoice, and they include a bunch of obscure instructions that you're supposed to understand. And then at the very bottom, it says, if you don't follow these instructions to the T, we are going to charge you with a criminal offense and throw you in the clink. This is a threat. And I don't take kindly to threats. I don't know about you. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can also reach us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. And Carlos. And Mark. Carlos Morales joining us from Truth Over Comfort. What is that, Carlos? It's a radio show, right? Yeah, it's a YouTube and radio show. We basically go into a number of different topics, generally libertarian-oriented. A lot of it also revolves around my prior work as a, as a child protective services investigator. Yes, yeah, so you've got a lot of, I'm sure, interesting stories to tell there. And uh, truthovercomfort.net, is it a weekly show? Uh, yeah, it's weekly. Is there a certain day that it's produced? Is it streamed live or is it only to podcast? It's it's. Basically, the YouTube show is streamed live, but for mm-hmm. the most part, it's just once a week, usually Monday or Tuesday. So how, how long have you been doing it? Um, I started it off as a show called The Renegade Variety Hour, and that was back last February, actually. So I guess oh, it's been a little over a year. Very cool. So truthovercomfort.net for more of Carlos. As we continue here with your calls and thoughts, we've got Aaron back with us uh, on Skype. Aaron, uh, you had brought up the issue of uh, determinism. And I guess I'm not really sure what your perspective was on it. I, it sounded like you might have thought that given enough input, given enough knowledge about uh, you know whatever it is that's 
has influenced a person in their lives that you would be able to predict what they choose in any given instance or what? Can you clarify your, where you come from? Um, that's, that's oversimplifying it, I guess, a little. The, uh, like computers work in a binary system where it's all discrete variables, you know, either this or this. Whereas human mind sort of functions in a fuzzy logic where it doesn't always come up with the optimum response. But so therefore you see this kind of randomness. You have a more likely choice and a less likely choice. But everybody's nature drives their choices. So at some level, Mark's nature determines that he loves liberty and that he's not going to want to put someone in a cage. The likelihood that he's going to throw someone in jail for smoking a doobie on his property is really unlikely but it's not impossible. So how is that different than determinism, I guess, is how would, in order for, for me to believe in free choice, I have to believe that at some fundamental level, I can choose to change my fundamental nature. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any mechanism within myself that I could change the driving force of who I am and why I would want to do that. Well, individuals change all the time, though. So when I was like, I don't know, 16 years old, I was a nearly obese uh, Christian Howard Dean lover, and now, yeah, I, yeah and now <laughs> I lost 130 pounds. I'm an atheist who has a pension for reading Ayn Rand. So I mean, yeah, individuals I mean, I change atheist, all the time. And now but, I'm a panentheist. But, but did you change yourself from within, or was it external stimuli that changed you over time? It's really hard to be able to tell, and I couldn't tell you that right now. Well, I know that uh, it's an internal change when somebody decides they're going to change their religious belief system. That's a pretty big internal thing. I mean, you may have been influenced by information you collected or an experience that you had, which of course you could argue was external, but ultimately right. you only come to a, a major conclusion like that by whatever internal processes, right? It, it seems likely that, or it seems, it, what seems true is, is that a person is likely to do what they're likely to do and that they're unlikely to do what they're unlikely to do, but that you can't determine whether or not, you know, with, with any kind of, um, with, with veracity, I guess, what they will and won't do. So like, then you would say determinism is bunk. I, I, yeah, I believe in free will. I've, I've spent time thinking about this and I maybe, I, you know, maybe if I sat down and really studied it, but I, not only do I find it to be, um, like to me, I just find the, the whole idea so abhorrent that I don't even want to study it. Like, I just, no. <laughs> you know, like, that's how I feel about it. Are you kidding me? That is not true. Now, I've read a little bit, and I've heard the case, you know, I've, I've heard a case made, but it's just like, you know, everything in me recoils against this information. So I've got this, seems, you know, I've well, got this bias that I just want to confirm so badly, I you know, I don't even like to talk <laughs> about it. It seems to go against the purpose. I mean, it seems to go against life, the idea that it would all just be predetermined, that uh, everything is predictable, and that you're not actually choosing things, that you're only giving, uh, being given the illusion of choice. And I, did, I, I didn't seems... say you're not choosing. I said that your choices are based on an immutable self, that you're designed, that you are who you are based on your birth and the way you were raised and the external stimuli. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And then you're free to choose whatever you want. But yeah. that's kind of a moot point because what you want is already determined. Yeah, pretty much. So wait, are you saying that what I want today was determined, but if it was by what different you, by from what some... happened yesterday and earlier today in your whole life? Yeah, basically the the environments, the genetics, and external stimuli end up kind of bre breaking down the person that you are right now. Not so that we know necessarily what those things are and could determine what people would do in a given circumstance. Not yet. Right. So right. let me ask you this: My opinions changed, and uh, Carlos mentioned it here. I mean, my opinion has changed on issues over time, and you know, in that circumstance, how does environment and, um, you know, external st stimuli and my personal history, uh, you know, work into that? I mean, because at some point then, you know, my whole uh, motivations change when my opinion changes on cer certain subjects. I think usually you can break someone's fundamental beliefs down to really, really basic fundamental assumptions. And that over time you try and develop what you do to in order to optimize accomplishing what you want. So maybe what you had previously were contradictory beliefs. So there's people out there that believe in the state and they also believe that people shouldn't die for whatever reasons. And they're contradictory views. And that's why people over time, they decide which one is more valuable to them and then they change their mind in order to have a self-consistent mind.
Yeah, you're using words like change and think about and everything else, which are all assuming that this person has at least some kind of choice behind it, which is a free will it, argument. It's a choice to do what they want. Yeah. And it's like, but they still have to weigh all those choices. And what are they weighing it against, but who they are physically, genetically, mentally from birth? You're start out, assuming you start out with a blank slate. No. You're, your very first choices are based on some physical aspect of who you were designed to be genetically or created, what you became to exist genetically. You know, I mean, I, it's it's hard to argue this. I guess, you know, I think I have free will, and it feels like I have free will. Absolutely. But, you know, at the same time, yeah, you're right. Uh, pretty much in if somebody knew me well enough, and that would be pretty well, they would— be able to guess what I'm going to do in a given circumstance. It's kind of the uh, the claim of a character witness in uh, in a in a court case. Well, you know, would this person do this? Well, no, no, they would never do that. He's a quiet guy. Um, you know, the the character yeah, but the people who uh, talk about like the, the the individuals who are always interviewed after somebody murders another person, they're always wrong. He was always really nice. I never saw that coming. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're yeah, they're never lying. You know, my issue with the determinism thing is maybe the logic is is solid that it is determinism is, is true and everything else. My main issue is usually determinists like say. Uh, our atheist pal Sam Harris, who's basically a proponent of the NWO in in no, in no other terms, as far as basically stating every single thing is predetermined. Therefore, we need a court system that does this, this, and this, and this is why we need to do this, this, and this. So basically, he's stating everyone is deterministic except him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, thanks, Aaron, for the call yeah. today. I appreciate the All discussion. Right. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. And you can join us on Skype as Aaron did. Skype username is lrn.fm, and we'll continue and get to the story when we get a chance about Colorado. You know, we're over three months into this whole legalization thing, so how's it going? Free Talk Live. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste, and safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com I'm a very bad man. And today I watched you leave for work. Then I kicked your door and took your stuff. Without a door devil reinforcing your door frame, it was like you invited me. Don't worry, I'll check back in a couple weeks. Once you've got new stuff. <laughs> Door Devils are available at participating Ace Hardware stores and locksmiths. Or visit DoorDevil.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme. M E M E. Helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at DontTreadOnMeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't Tread on Meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't Tread on Meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you would like. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. The Skype username that you can connect to is lrn.fm. Send a contact request first. If you don't do that, you can't call. So send the contact request. It will be approved, and then it'll be easy for you to connect with us on Skype. You can also connect with us online at freetalklive.com, as well as other listeners. There's a variety of different interactive options on the website. Now, when you're online, privacy should be a concern, especially now in this post-Snowden world where we now know for sure that the government can snoop on pretty much everything that you're doing online. And uh, it's almost a guarantee that your internet service provider is doing that very same snooping. They're likely keep uh, keeping records of every website that you visit, every search term that you enter. These records could be kept for up to five years in some cases, and you can stop that from happening by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. ProXPN is a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that wherever you're going and whatever you're doing will no longer be known to your internet service provider. Therefore, it will no longer be logged by them. And ProXPN doesn't keep logs of your internet surfing habits, so go and hook up with ProXPN. You can use software that they've made for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. And if you're a Linux user, setup's a little bit different for you. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. You can get started with their free account right now and then later upgrade to the premium package. And you can get 20% off with our discount code, which is FTL20. That breaks the price down to $5 a month when you buy the annual package. And if you want to uh, save even more on the annual package, just pay with Bitcoin over at proxpn.com slash FTL. Don't forget our discount code FTL20 for 20% off for the lifetime of your account. With the premium package, you'll get unlimited bandwidth. You'll also have different servers around the world to which you can connect. And premium users can privately torrent, which is a very valuable feature of ProXPN. For those of you that are interested in doing torrenting, you can do it privately. Because normally if you're torrenting, your IP address is out there for everybody on that torrent uh, to take a look at, including the, you know, the various copyright holders of the world. So keep that in mind. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL and protect yourself uh, with ProXPN. There is, by the way, a seven-day risk-free money-back guarantee. Let's go to the phones. Lot, who has been waiting patiently, is with us. We had a phone system crash earlier. Lot, thanks for coming back with us. You're on the air. And, by the way, listening in Michigan City to WIMS. Well, uh, thank you very much, Ian, Mark, Carlos, Namaste, brothers. Um, namaste. Aaron, Namaste. Thank you for thank you for your uh, input. I really appreciated it, and it gave me an opportunity to kind of correlate what he was talking about in the sense of what my topic was. And to an, to a, he is right to an extent, I'd have to say. Um, there are decisions that we choose to do that are predetermined already, but that's because we've predetermined them already. 
through the environment, the experiences that we obtain from the moment we are quote-unquote born to the time of now, we go through different variances and events, and what we choose and how we choose to handle those events at that time frame basically sends in uh, like a like a, a breaks open a pathway and then it kind of holds it in. So the next time you experience it, you have an opportunity to change the way that you respond to it, or you will go into the same pattern that you had done previously because your body will ultimately, energy ultimately likes to flow in the least resistance. <clears throat> so, yes, when we make choices now, we do things unconsciously because of how we've gone about them in our past. But here's the best part, and this is why life is a dream. The reason why is, is because we can wake up from the nightmare at any time that we choose. We just have to acknowledge what that nightmare, quote, unquote, is. So, like, for me, I'm a smoker. I, I'm not proud of it, but you know what? I've done it, and it, I associate it with things, whatever my reasoning is. But I'm at a point to where I'm like, okay, it's time to give it up. I'm becoming aware of why I'm doing it. I'm becoming, to the associations that I have predetermined in my past, becoming aware of it, raising my conscious level of my problem, and ultimately I'm on my way of working through it. Now, I know that this procedure works because through other events in my life, which I'm going through a separation, um, you know, I've been through a lot of uh, different events, being in the service, you know, um, doing just but, amounts of all those wait, things. Is, is this dream but, metaphorical yeah, or Yeah, this literal? is a poetic dream, right? I mean... Because it's, it's, it's very oh, sexy sounding if it's metaphorical. If you mean it by literally, I mean, it's a little... Obviously, you're not waking up to the non-smoker you are, right? Yeah. No, no, no. It is, it is very metaphorical because oh, okay. ultimately everything, well it, well, it has to be because everything that we come to accept as our own truth is only information that has been passed by us. And when we feel about it, we feel that we're right. Now, either A, we're really feeling what it means to be quote unquote true, or we're just taking the assumption that the individual, because my father told me, or the man with this doctrine degree told me, so it must be right. They must not be trying to prove me in the wrong direction. But that's the wrong way of going about it. Find truth, metaphorically and ultimately literally, you have to feel it. Feel what it feels to you, what it feels if it feels right. And yeah, well, someone can feel that they don't have cancer, but they still have cancer. There are objective standards in regards to truth. We make logic statements. We can figure out whether or not they're true based off of their consistency, uh, probability, and whether or not there's evidence for those things to be true. It's not just a matter of, well, that thing, that's not a table. It's a, it's a unicorn. You well, know, those people feel are, like they have the truth, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be going along the path that they are. I mean, oh, yeah. The people that support the state feel that that's the right thing to do. It's the way that society needs to be organized, that this is, you know, this is appropriate. Uh, the people that believe various different religions all believe that they have the truth, and they probably feel as though it's the truth. Whatever their reason is for feeling that, maybe it is that they were told by daddy or mommy that that was the truth, and that's their reason for feeling that way, but... I don't know if feelings are enough to really well, determine no, and, the truth. And authority figures love using the idea of feeling or there being alternate truths or anything else because it makes it gives away all the power away from the individual. So the only person who can really tell you the truth is the authority, the authority. figure, which is kind of like faith-based thinking but, in the worst kind of way. But but that's only if you allow if you allow to the authority to regardless of whatever it is that they try to push on you to sway to their direction, you could ultimately stand up and be stronger than that. And I've experienced that myself. I've had my own boss come to me and screaming at my face, and I turned around and looked. I looked at him and I was like, you know, there's no reason to be yelling. I'm a man. I'm not a dog. I'm not a slave. If you want something done, you can talk to me just in the form of fashion we are. You don't have to scream at me. You don't have to yell at me. And I hold that regard to each individual I come across because I don't like being yelled at. I feel as if using those emotions to persuade a conversation is going is affecting the ultimate free will of an individual, which I believe is the ultimate sin, because we do have free will. We have the choice to do You're whatever going it is all over the place, man. <laughs> yeah, like I mean we're going from like what does truth mean to like smoking cigarettes to your boss isn't the very nice guy. To free well, will, I'm, I'm a little. I don't know. Uh, in, in the way you're I, using I, free will, I would say you have. Uh, you're talking about rights. It sounds like rights theory to me, as opposed to free will. I mean, you you have the right not to be yelled at because you get to choose whether or not you're going to associate with that person. Yeah, we live off the assumption essentially that there is free will because there's really kind of no other choice as to doing it. Whether or not there is free will, whenever we decide to judge a specific 
uh, uh, action that occurs and then try to best figure out from there. It doesn't really matter if free will exists or not. We're living off the assumption no matter what. Well, see, that's where people, you make the assumption to judge, whereas if you choose not to judge, if you just observe that which is and allow it to be is, not how you feel about yeah, it. Yeah, if there's like a child molester who's having sex with kids, I'm going to choose to judge him as a child molester and try to get him out of society as quickly as possible. I don't care if something, I mean, it's terrible if something happened to him earlier on that caused him to do that. But for the time being, the most important thing to do is to judge the situation as it is and then try to reprimand or fix fix it as quickly as possible. Well, I think I, I see kind of where you're coming from a lot with, with your statement there that uh, it's a very Buddhist sounding kind of statement being, you know, dispassionately sort of connected or disconnected from from what is but at the same time you can still have that understanding but also still take action right when you see a wrong being committed of course oh well, of course because I'm, I'm not saying that you're not judging okay somebody commits an action every individual should be held accountable for the actions in which they choose because we all have that choice if you choose to do something that hurts somebody else such as child molestation such as murder yes there's a consequence ultimately you should pay for. Should I take your life? No, that's not for me to judge. You have a lot more suffering to go through. But you should be held accountable. I believe every individual. That much is true. And lot. thank you for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. There's more coming up. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial, 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-721-4255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPRadio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at News.FPP.cc and books at Shop.FPP.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Just dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. So, for instance, uh, we've ended up having this sort of uh, esoteric conversation about determinism and other things like that. Uh, You're welcome to comment on these things or bring up whatever you want here, 855-450-FREE. Also, still to come, we'll talk about Colorado legalization of marijuana here now a few months later, a few months into it. How is it going? PolicyMike.com has an analysis. Uh, So your thoughts are certainly welcome here. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And we go uh, continuing with your phone calls here. Just want to also remind you to shop with Free Talk Live. When you start your shopping at shop.freetalklive.com, there's Amazon links there. You just click into the right Amazon for you, and Free Talk Live will get a portion of the purchase price. Very simple. Same great Amazon, same huge selection, all the reviews that you're used to, everything you're used to, the great prices, the free Super Saver shipping, it's all the same. You're just entering through our affiliate link, so Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. So start your shopping, and it makes a big, uh, start your shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. It does make a big difference for us when you do that. So thank you. We've got Robert on the line in Vermont. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Carlos and Mark. Carlos, I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you, please. Okay. All right. Was, go for it. What was the what was the straw that broke the camel's back for you to have to leave the uh, Department of Child Welfare? Oh, Child Protective Services. Yeah. Essentially, there was there were so many different cases that I was dealing with that were basically based around the presupposition that a parent who's using marijuana cannot be a good parent whatsoever. And there's a strikingly high amount of removals that occur per, uh, because of that. So this was the official p- position of the bureaucracy. Was oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, 85% of all removals within the United States that lead to foster homes are not for physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. They are for something called negligence. And negligence in the vast majority of those cases is drug use. So smoking a joint means you can't take care of a kid. Absolutely. So in a particular case that ended, it ended up with a a mom getting shot. And so after that, I was just like, you know, I can't morally stay in this agency any longer because to act morally would be antithetical to the principles that run Child Protective Services and the incentive structure of it. Yeah, there was a story out where a child was removed from um, its home and for the, you know, pot smoking and ended up being killed in a foster home. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really this is tough stuff. What did you say the percentage of, of removals were for marijuana? Oh, well, it's. There's not a, a straight up thing on it. There's 85 percent of all removals are for something called negligence. A vast majority of those are for drugs. In fact, gotcha. in Colorado and California, as we're bringing up Colorado, places where they've legalized marijuana, right? Especially this is especially in the case of California because you have to get a license, right? So they'll use that marijuana license as proof that you are negligent to your children, oh, even wow. though you legally even have though it. Even you're legal. That's even wild. though you're legal. Yeah, because they can actually get you for, like, you're using pharmaceutical drugs, right? Even if you're legally allowed to use them, they can say, well, you're abusing them in some way, so we'll go ahead and remove your kids. So I, Were you in California? I'm sorry, I don't remember no, no, I, was, I was. I was in Texas, but Texas, okay. I, uh, so through truthovercomfort.net, you can go to the website, and I do a lot of advocacy work. So I help out families in different states everywhere mm-hmm. who are having legal issues. And the, the case you brought up earlier where there was a, 
a child that was removed from a cannabis, someone who's, who's pro-cannabis, and their kid ended up dying in foster care. That happened in Austin, Texas, but I can give you a thousand other cases where things like Jeez. that happen all the time. And the, the statistics in regards to foster, foster homes are just devastating and how dangerous these foster homes really are. There's question number one, Robert. Number two? Yeah, my other question is, is that was there ever a case at all that you knew that the person was clearly not guilty that you just went ahead and, and forward on with? No, uh, not in my particular cases. I knew of other people who did it, but uh, mm. mentioning names is never a good idea. Hey, Robert, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. It's easy to compromise in those circumstances, oh, yeah. though. I mean, it's like you're, you know, what do you, because he used the term no. And what do you know? Well, um, no, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be interviewing a woman pretty soon who, in another state, managed to, uh, to sue Child Protective Services and won for $9.5 million. Wow. Well, well Over what? It, um, they, the, every single one of the caseworkers who worked with their case was found uh, for liable, right? They were just lying through their teeth through this entire case. There was a bunch of different corruption because apparently the husband in the case knew the peop- knew people and the caseworkers and everything else wow. like that. Guess what happened to the caseworkers who were found liable? Nothing. They all became supervisors. Uh. <laughs> they all moved up, and this is absolutely disgusting. They stuck this, this child in a place where they were routinely drugged oh and God. molested in the foster home. We are talking seriously terrible situations. And what was the alleged problem with the home that they were removed from? Um, negligence. Yeah. So it could have been a pot smoker. Yeah, no exactly. And Negligence, generally not as bad as molestation. Yeah. No doubt. No, now, what's no the motivation for these agents? I mean, obviously in a case where the agents know the one of the parents and are doing them a favor, there's that motivation. But generally, if an agent doesn't know the family and they take a, a child who you would say should not have been taken. Oh, yeah. You know, the parents were good. Is it, uh, you know, does the agency get paid more based on the amount of uh, children they seize? Yeah, so the caseworker is a little bit different, but as far as the agency is concerned, there's a huge incentive, right? So, uh, say in Texas, right, you get, the agency gets four to $6,000 extra subsidization per every single child that was removed from a home and placed in a foster home. It's four to six dollars. Thousand dollars. Four to six thousand dollars per, per each kid. Per lo- how, what period of time? Um. And, all you need is the number that you had the removal. Okay. So from there, though, then the foster home, of course, has the incentive to keep them there longer and longer, and more and more workers get brought in for every single new investigation that comes up. So they, you know, it, they don't really care whether or not the case is true or false, in as much as they want to continue to get in revenue. It's just kind of how the incentive structure is. So why don't they um, just remove a child for a day and then put them back in, and then they get all this money? You know, just. Oh, well, I guess that would be too easy. Okay. Bureaucracies have to be way, way more confusing All than right. that. Yep. Yeah. No, and uh, and as far as that's concerned, though, um, you know, when it gets to the foster home situation, I, I released, a, I, I did a speech called Foster Homes Where Good Children Go to Die, and mm. in foster homes, children are six times more likely to die than if they stayed in an abusive ho- household, and that was, uh, you can find all the research, by the way, on truthovercomfort.net. Wow. Six times more likely to die in a foster home than in an abusive household. Yeah. Wow. And that's so that's the situations where they're being removed for abuse and abuse isn't neglect, right? Yes. So in 85% of cases No, 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 no. excuse me. Excuse me. No, they they did not they did not break down the uh it, it, that's including the neglect charges okay. in this particular case. Gotcha. That'd be really hard to be able to break down the, but still six times? That's It's it's huge. Is, I just wanted to be clear. Yeah, that is a, that is a crazy number and they are 7 8 times more likely to be abused in a foster home than in the regular household, right? So in comparison to say a normal household, they're 7 8 times more likely to be abused in a foster home. Hmm. They're also, yeah, but many times they're taken for abuse. Yes. And they're, then put in a place where there are seven to eight times more likely. Where, where did you get that statistic? I just want to know where these uh, come from. A, yeah. Again, um, your footnotes are at truthovercomfort.com. Yeah. I have dot like, net. Fo- yeah, dot dot net, dot dot net. there's like 40 different sources that I have. Okay. All. Sorry. I shouldn't be asking you for footnotes. I should you know, just direct people to just, where to go. Yeah. Don't just, do the research, Mark. It's there for you. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I, I try to do every single bit of work because the thing is, a lot of these facts are incredibly startling. And yeah, I'm, that's startling. Yeah, and that's that's the name a of the show. A child right? is yeah. a child that has been removed from their home is seven to eight times as likely to be abused at a foster home as the home from which they were uh, removed is a startling fact. Yeah, and they're also more likely to be put on one of our fun little things called psychotropic drugs. They're actually three times more likely to be put on psychotropic drugs. Than children in the same um, economic level. So impoverished kids are usually a the child ones. in a foster home. You mean? Yeah, a child in the foster home. So here's the thing: 
uh, foster homes are granted more money for every single diagnosis a child has, right? Okay. Now, for a paralyzed kid, that makes sense, right? Because, you know, you got to bring them to the hospital, you got to do money. a lot of work, yep. right? But in this particular case, it can mean a mental diagnosis, right? So Oppositional you, defiance disorder. Yeah, ADHD, Ian's got that. bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, insomnia. I knew six-year-old six year old kids who were on six psychotropic drugs. Oh I knew seven-year-old kids who were on more than seven psychotropic drugs. These kids were zombified. They were totally wrecked when I met them. And it was just it was horrendous. Imagine. And, of course, you know, you have really high suicide numbers in these foster homes, too, which is not going to be helped by the abusive situation, plus they've been removed from their parents. By the way, here's some SSRIs that make you more likely to want to kill yourself on top of it. And the diddling, right? Didn't you say that there was diddling involved, too? Diddling? Diddling. Diddling. As in molestation. Uh, molestation. Oh, that's yeah. not funny. Um, I don't like the word. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Having sex with children. Uh, we should use the words that, that are actually okay. there because they need to be exactly put as the words they, they are. Gotcha. And it is it is absolutely atrocious. And another- um, But that's going to make you want to kill yourself too. Yes. It's all going to make you want to kill yourself essentially. And they're more likely, uh, children in foster homes are more likely to get PTSD than veterans of war and mm. less likely to recover from it. Wow. Shocking. So we, it's it's just a tremendously evil situation. And when I hear people say, "Well, I know it's the foster home is really bad, but the, the situation they were in was worse," I'm like, do you, uh, "Have you ever even been to a foster home? And do you know anything about the parent?" I'm guessing no one, both of those, because I've been out there, I've been yeah. in, in the yeah. field, and I've seen these parents. It's faith based, um, you know, belief in government. That's yeah. all. That's what it is. So true. We'll come back with more. You can discuss whatever happens to be on your mind. Plus, we'll uh, have a little three month retrospective on Colorado. How's it been going with the whole legalization thing? Policy Mike has some thoughts we can bring back here in a moment. Uh, Hour number two is on the way. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And what's the Federal Reserve think about Bitcoin? Mark's got a story about that. It's Free Talk Live. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, May 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.58 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,301 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $444. 
Antiwar.com reports multiple strikes across Nigeria's northeastern state of Borno have left at least 49 people dead and many villages badly damaged as Boko Haram continues its offensive against the region. Hit the hardest was the tiny village of Dalwa Masuba, which on Saturday saw Boko Haram members ambush vans carrying firewood, then attacking the village outright, burning much of it to the ground. Five more were killed in the neighboring state of Kano, where a suicide car bomb hit a street full of popular restaurants in the foreign quarter. Boko Haram frequently attacks that part of Kano, objecting to the public sale of alcohol as un-Islamic. In the latest indication that the U.S. is moving closer to direct intervention, the Pentagon has announced that it is planning to add another surveillance drone to the intelligence gathering operation in the country's northeast. Though the planes are looking for 276 kidnapped schoolgirls, U.S. law prevents the Pentagon from sharing any intelligence directly with Nigeria's government. And many in Congress are pushing for the U.S. military to launch its own unilateral rescue operation in the area. You've heard of shinybadges.com, but you need to check out the new causes tab. Every item in that section includes a donation to a worthy liberty project like the Free Ross Ulbricht Legal Defense Fund. So go to shinybadges.com, click on the new causes tab, and get yourself a quality product that not only supports the cause you believe in, but starts a conversation with your neighbors. Plus, get a free gift when you pay with Bitcoin at shinybadges.com. Reuters reports, in a bid for growth beyond an increasing competitive cellular market, AT&T plans to pay $48.5 billion to buy DirecTV, the top U.S. satellite TV operator. The deal, announced on Sunday, comes as Comcast awaits regulatory approval of its $45 billion bid for Time Warner Cable, a transaction that has the potential to transform the television landscape by creating a new cable and broadband internet powerhouse. AT&T said it is offering $95 per share of DirecTV in a combination of stock and cash. That's a 10% premium over Friday's closing price. The cash portion of $28.50 cents per share will be financed by cash, asset sales, financing already lined up, and other opportunistic debt market transactions. Analysts said the deal would help support AT&T's dividend even as it confronts tougher competition from T-Mobile USA and other cellular operations that have pressured its average revenue per user. AT&T said it expects the takeover to deliver cost savings at an annual rate of $1.6 billion by the third year after closing. There are also potential anti-competitive hurdles to clear. AT&T is likely to face questions from regulators about the deal's impact on competition in those areas where its U-verse service now competes with DirecTV in offering television. Consumer advocates are already putting pressure on regulators to reject the deal. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 the BBC reports South Korea's president said the country is going to break up its Coast Guard in the wake of the ferry disaster in which about 300 people died. In a televised address, she apologized formally for the sinking and said a new safety agency would handle rescue duties with investigative functions passing to the police. The Seawall ferry disaster on April 16th killed 281 passengers, most of whom were high school students. Another 23 are still missing. The ferry captain and three members of the crew have been charged with manslaughter. Prosecutors have indicted another 11 crew members for negligence. Only 172 passengers survived the sinking of the ferry, including 22 of the 29 crew members. An interim investigation found that a sharp turn was the main cause of the sinking. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. College roommates continue their bonding process until real friends are made, and a teacher hopes they never Google him. It's time for the weekly video feature that's heartier and more comforting than a heaping bowl of mom's butternut squash soup. This is the Onion Week in Review. 
Longtime James F. Blaine Elementary School teacher Suzanne Pomponio told reporters today that she could not believe how much fatter her second graders are getting. Pomponio estimates that each and every one of her kids must be 8 to 10 pounds heavier than anyone in her 2011 class, adding, quote, and those kids were pretty fat, too. Honestly, I didn't think it was possible that this year's kids could be fatter than last year's, but they are. I mean, short kids are fat, tall kids are fat, and there's a smell. I don't really know how to describe it. Local dad Michael Corain navigated several discount travel websites today with a precision reminiscent of 18th century Viennese prodigy Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart composing a symphony. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, launching into the second hour of the program, here to take your calls about anything that you might want to discuss. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. That's 855-450-3733. And you may Skype in. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So feel free to connect with us in the way that you think is best. With you tonight, it's Ian here. Carlos. And Mark. Carlos Morales is with us from truthovercomfort.net. Uh, so I've been teasing this story all night tonight, and let's jump into it. From policymike.com, three months, that's actually been a full four months. We're now going to finish the fifth month. But anyway, this was actually published in May, so I'm not. maybe they only have three months worth of data at this point. All right. Three months since legalizing marijuana, here's what Colorado looks like. The news, Colorado's pot sales are booming. State's Department of Revenue reports that marijuana retailers sold nearly $19 million worth of recreational weed in March, up from $14 million in February. The first three months of legal weed. That's a lot of sales. A lot of sales. A lot of weed. And a big increase in sales in one month's time. And because Colorado led this, um, they're going to reap the benefits in whatever revenue the state is going to collect off of this uh, marijuana. From pot tourism, you mean? Pot tourism. I mean, obviously, that's probably where a good portion of this stuff is coming from. And just take a look at how Nevada and Atlantic City used to do as far as gambling before gambling became so ubiquitous. When I was a kid, I didn't know of a state that had a lottery. I was from Florida. I don't know, you know, I don't know what state was first or anything. I don't know the history of the lottery. But when I was a kid, there wasn't a lotto. And then, but you could go to Nevada and you could go to Atlantic City to gamble. And probably a lot of people in the Northeast went to Atlantic City and a lot more people went to Nevada because it was just sort of nicer. And what you find, what I, what you find over time is, is that yeah, well, as gambling becomes more and more legal. In wherever they are, people are less likely to travel. So those sure. states, you know, now Biloxi is getting a lot of business where then probably um, was lost to Las Vegas and maybe. So Atlanta if City. all 50 states legalized marijuana tomorrow, the numbers would probably change pretty dramatically yeah, I would in Colorado. Say but nonetheless, uh, I imagine a, a good portion of these millions of dollars are still people in Colorado who live in Colorado sure. who are now smoking legally because marijuana is a popular drug. It is the most popular illicit drug the most popular illegal drug yeah i love how the fact that it said uh, marijuana sales are booming as if they're what they weren't making that much money on weed before that it's just the <laughs> state didn't know about it right, right. It's just now it, it can be uh, announced publicly. legal marijuana sales are booming yeah they should they should really bring that up <laughs> well the, they're they don't have the same agendas we do you know <laughs> oh yeah i guess so so now this news of course doesn't make us happy but It is what it is. The first three months of legal weed have netted about $7.3 million in taxes, not including medical marijuana sales taxes and licenses, which bring that number to $12.6 million. That's all in taxes. And that's over the course of a quarter. Over the course of a quarter, $12.6 million in a quarter of a year. In its first few months, Colorado could already be uh, outpacing those historic first-day sales that they had on a daily basis. Did they set up an initiative to where the marijuana tax was going to directly fund something in particular? Like with lottery, it directly funds public education. Is I there... don't know. That's a good question. I don't, yeah. I don't remember that. that. Yeah. Um, I would guess it's going into the general fund, but I really I, I don't know. If you're in Colorado and you can answer Carlos's question, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And honestly, 
it's a big fat lie anyway. In Florida, the lotto is uh, directed towards education. But what happened was they, def- you know, the state defunded education from the general fund from because, the amount based on right, based, well, not not exactly, yeah. but essentially they didn't feel the need. The pressing need wasn't there. Oh well, you know, I mean, the amount of uh, state money going to uh, schools needs to doesn't need to be as high. That's such a weasel move. That's great. Well, they're it. they're liars. Leave it to I the mean, state politicians. <laughs> it's it's a synonym for liar and thief. Yeah. Retail marijuana sales taxes brought in 1.4 million in January, 1.43 million in February, and now 1.898 million in March. A clear upward traje- uh, trajectory. And total marijuana tax transfers and distributions went from 2.9 million in January to 4 million in March. And perhaps more importantly, while it's still somewhat early, the uptrending numbers indicate that initial sales weren't simply the result of new toy excitement, wherein everyone was buying pot just because they could. Coloradans wanted marijuana before, and they still do now. Now, did we read numbers coming out of um, Amsterdam that, you know, essentially there was a rise in consumption of marijuana when it became legalized, and then it sort of tapered off to the point that we're seeing now that school-age kids are less likely to smoke marijuana than That's right. kids in here in, in the, the United Netherlands, States? that was the experience, yes. So, I mean, we could see a tapering off over time. I don't know. But one of the things that likely you'll see, because in, in Netherlands it's illegal well, these for— are, just to clarify, what you're looking at here are total numbers and sales. That would include all the tourists, whereas the numbers from Amsterdam were only about the low locals in the townies. It's true uh, because actually it's there it's not legal in Amsterdam for a tourist to purchase marijuana, right? Um As I, I believe that it is. Uh, I don't think it is. Uh, Cuz anybody can go into one of those shops and purchase. Maybe it's not legal but it's tolerated, but it's mm. definitely tolerated. They they tolerate a lot. It though. might as well be legal at this point to buy cannabis in a shop as I understand it. Okay. Uh, there have been some restrictions that have come down on uh, the sale of psychedelic mushrooms in the yeah, Netherlands. They, but... they got rid of those completely because right. of a dubious claim of s- dubious. Anyway, some uh, some. Oh, gross... I'm sure they're gone completely. No, yeah. you mean they're no longer as yeah. tolerated. Well, exactly. Yes. So apparently, some girl jumped off a building because she was messed up on shrooms, which isn't suicidal tendencies aren't a huge thing when it comes to psychedelic drugs. We usually leave those to the. Um, Pharmaceutical companies. That's true. Uh, however, I think that it's a bad idea to take a psychedelic drug while you're having a mental problem. Like oh, yeah. while you're angry or depressed or something like that. You know, that's not going to solve your problem. Or any it's, drug. I mean, alcohol, sure. of course, actually causes schizophrenic-like outbreaks in individuals who aren't even susceptible to um, to that particular thing. Yeah. So when uh, I, there was there were some studies done as far as uh, the concerns in regards to alcohol, right, and other illegal drugs. So one of the big th- statements was that PCP is just causing people to go nuts and just kill people regularly and everything else. But whenever they did studies on it, they found that alcohol led to more aggressive behavior than angel dust, aka PCP. I believe it. And uh, schizophrenic-like behavior, more outbreaks with alcohol than with LSD. So alcohol, when we're talking about as far as bad drugs to take at any time, alcohol is probably the number one as far as that's concerned. So over the same time period uh, in Colorado, Denver's crime has slightly declined, making opponents who said it would result in more trafficking seem kind of silly. It's created a modest number of jobs, ranging from— Yeah, I couldn't imagine that it would really have much to do with crime other than the crimes of— you know, selling marijuana and possessing marijuana. I mean, yep. I just don't see pot as related to crime much. Uh, generally, you're not going to find people smoking pot and deciding to go out and rob a liquor store. Yeah, there probably aren't too many people committing robberies to buy their marijuana for the end of the week. Uh, I don't think that's very common in the marijuana uh, business or the consumer end of it. But you'll certainly see that with crack cocaine or, or other drugs, which also should be legal. And we would also see crime. We'd see crime drop dramatically if if other drugs were legalized alongside of cannabis, because it's those other drugs that really are driving the break-ins and they're driving the smash and grabs and the you know the knife point robberies and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know the the main issue with drugs is their illegality, not the actual drugs themselves. So over the same time period, again, crime has uh, declined. Weed Maps, a dispensary review site, uh, has grossed some $25 million in revenue in 2013. That seems unbelievable. $25 million for a website to show you where you can go buy marijuana? Really? I I, I wouldn't be able to say anything. That is crazy. Uh, So it's also created the legalization. It's created a number of jobs ranging from bud tending and marijuana journalism to farm labor and ownership. 
And the state has even created a banking system that complies with the U.S. Treasury system's guidelines, clearing up the last regulatory questions. While certain- See, I was wondering about this. They were going to have these marijuana businesses were having a little trouble initially banking. Mm-hmm. And it somebody stepped into the realm and said, okay, well, we'll open a bank that does business for these folks. That's awesome. And there's more detail about that. We can give that to you as well. It's in a different story. Uh, let's see. While certain parts of the rollout, like edible cannabis regulations, have come under question, the law seems to be operating basically as intended. Legal cannabis sales in the United States are projected to reach as high as $2.57 billion this year, split among the 21 states that allow the sale of some form of marijuana. That's up from $1.53 billion a year ago. As time goes on, the marijuana industry will grow its own stakeholders and perhaps become a political lobby in its own right. We'll continue with a little bit more on how's it going with the pot situation in Colorado. 855-450 free. We had one of our listeners call and kind of explain what it was like as a consumer, which was just an amazing experience. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, April 21st, 2014, gold opened at $12.98 and 80 cents. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for $13.46, $6.73 for a half ounce, or $3.36 and 50 cents for a quarter ounce. That's $13.46, $6.73, and $3.36.50. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot free talk live dot com dvd books music instruments periodicals computers software electronics photo cell phone office products home and garden bed and bath furniture kitchen pet supplies automotive hardware apparel shoes jewelry grocery healthcare, sports and outdoors toys games used and more it's a department store at your fingertips shop.freetalklive.com get all your shopping done get a great deal and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit free talk live when you enter amazon via shop.freetalklive.com 
Have you ever wanted to help a hardworking person get their business off the ground? Then join me in enjoying some BuzzBox coffee. Let's make a difference, one cup at a time. Join us in helping people buy their own coffee farms through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Free Talk Live coffee drinkers will truly change lives forever. To get the best coffee you've ever tasted, it's organic, shade-grown, and top 1% Arabica grade. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's free, just cover shipping. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Just dial on in here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. You can, uh, of course, get interactive in a variety of different ways on our website. That is freetalklive.com. So if you go to blockchain.com, you can download a free app that allows you to accept Bitcoins at your business. This is really designed for bricks and mortar kind of business mm -hmm. um, where you can do a checkout on a smartphone or a tablet. But the blockchain.com um, app makes it easy for you. There's no terms of service. There's no fees. There's no uh, ID requirements of any kind. I want you to try to imagine a service that allows you to accept payment that doesn't charge you anything for it and doesn't have any ID requirements. This is fascinating, and this is one of the things that Bitcoin allows. Bitcoin is a revolutionary technology that allows payments to be really uh, easy, uh, inexpensive, and uh, relatively fast. So blockchain.com, if you've got a bricks-and-mortar business and want to accept Bitcoins for free, zero fees, blockchain.com. All right, so toll-free number 855-450-FREE. We've been talking about Colorado and how things are going here. We're now in May, and the first three months of the year, the numbers are in, the totals are there. You know, how have sales been? Well, it looks like sales are up. Uh, over you know, March over February, they're up quite a bit. Actually, went up from 14 million in February to 19 million dollars worth of marijuana retail in March, which is a tremendous increase. You know, 33, approximately 33 percent increase in one month. And uh, there's more numbers here that we've been going over. A little bit more from the story at policymike.com. The Colorado legislature has formed a plan to spend 33 million dollars of the marijuana taxes on school nurses and public education on marijuana. Even Colorado cops <laughs> plan to get a chunk of the new revenue, asking for 10 to 15 percent of the proceeds for DUI enforcement and fighting diversion to other states and unlicensed sales. You know, I was going to ask if they also brought up the fact of how much more money Colorado has saved as far as arresting people. Like, has the D has DEA funding dropped down or has cop funding dropped down at all? But apparently cops are getting even more money to apparently pull people over for more meaningless crimes. Yeah, uh, of course these are not. This isn't good news all over the place. You know, the fact that the police are getting funded from the marijuana sales certainly isn't a good thing. Although I did read. Well, there's supposed to be a savings, right? I mean, that was part of the idea is, is there going to be a savings in law enforcement if you legalize marijuana? Because but it's that doesn't no mean their budgets are going to go down. They can just allocate the budget to other things, right? So yeah. they could just begin enforcing stop sign regulations more harshly, or other drug laws, or whatever other investigations well, they want to Yeah, commit. it's whenever like the Democrats scream about the Republicans. The Republicans are going to cut spending by 30%. No, no, no. It's cutting 30% off of projected spending increases. But the numbers are down significantly. To answer your earlier question, yeah. they, uh, the numbers of arrests are down significantly. I don't remember if it was Colorado or Washington, but I mean, it went from like 7,000 or like 8,000 arrests in a year for marijuana possession down to 100 and something That's in awesome. 2013. And that was not even with the legal uh, way of selling the cannabis. That was with just people not being arrested for possession anymore. So tremendous uh, decline, and presumably the hundred and some that were arrested were likely arrested for having more than an ounce on them because of that apparently was still illegal or something like that, or is still illegal. Yeah. So the bulk of the sales continue to be in medical marijuana, which has been legal since 2000 in Colorado and recorded $35 million in sales in March. So add that to the $19 million in recreational weed. So really, you're talking about more than $50 million worth of marijuana being sold 
in Colorado in one month's time, if you include both recreational and medical. It's pretty amazing. And by the way, the medical, there's another article that I have about the comparison between the recreational prices and the medical prices in Colorado, and medical weed's cheaper. So you can get the same brand, if you will, of the same variety, uh, the same choices in the medical market. It's just cheaper. And so the $35 million in medical weed is actually a lot more like per, you know, they're getting more for their money. And so if it was the same amount of weed that was being sold recreationally, it would be even more money's worth. So it'd probably be $50 million worth of medical if it were being sold as recreational. I don't know if that makes any sense. Sure. Okay, good. So since recreational weed is more heavily taxed, it could still rapidly outpace medical marijuana in total tax dollars. In total, Governor John Hickenlooper projected in February that Colorado marijuana sales could approach $1 billion. And I presume that's for the full uh, the full year. Of course, sales could still slow down, but the news in Colorado is evidence that marijuana legalization can successfully generate value for both the local economy and the government. There you go. Everything's working fine. Crime is down slightly in Colorado. The numbers are significant of uh, revenue for both the stores. There's jobs being created. They didn't mention anything about automobile accidents. This would be one of the things that you would uh, assume that they would um, talk mm. about, right? Like, I yeah. I want to know if everybody is driving around stoned, um, you know, are automobile accidents up? Now, we've seen statistics on this show that show that um, you've got to be pretty stoned yeah. for uh, for you to, and especially somebody who's, who's smoked marijuana, uh, you know, very little, and this is like their first time or something like that, mm-hmm. you know, that it, it, it's unlikely that it, uh, marijuana in a reasonable dose is going to cause much, uh, you know, much detriment to your driving. But I think that there's this uh, sort of social um, momentum behind going after anybody who's in any way impaired behind the wheel, especially if there's a problem. You know what I mean? And thankfully, by the time you're that stoned, you're too paranoid to even want to drive anyway. (laughs) It's like, I'm just going to sit down and eat some Doritos. That may be true. This is a terrible idea. Yes, there is a push, Mark, for uh, people to, you know, if the, the, I think the perspective is that if marijuana is going to be legal, then there needs to be a crackdown on people using it and driving because people presume that you'll you'll be inebriated. That people, I, I don't know if they've never been stoned or when they did get stoned, they were just so silly they thought, gosh, driving would be really dangerous or whatever. Uh, they don't understand that stone drivers are actually statistically safer drivers uh, in multiple studies than uh, than, a, than a straight driver in a lot of cases, and certainly safer uh, by far than alcohol-induced drivers. I'm not sure so, that I've read a study where they're safer drivers, but um, you yeah, know, I think it was the only, original uh, Australian I think Department that in, of Transportation. In the, Ar- in, the, in the Australian one, they were marginally worse than a stone than a straight driver, and significantly better than a drunk driver. Okay, well, I misre- you are misremembering that, in my opinion. Okay, and then there was a uh, there was a CNN like show where they decided to check uh, how well people could drive while they were stoned. Yeah, and there's that was appara- great. There's apparently a legal limit, like uh, like a blood level check or something else they can do to see if you're too high to be, to be able to drive. I and haven't heard anything about this yet, so they can figure out whether you're stoned or not. Yeah, okay. and so people were technically six times over the legal limit of being stoned in order to drive, and they're still driving fine. Until like one guy about ten times is too much, and then there was a really intense recreational stoner, and she was twenty times the legal limit until she was like, "Yeah, yeah I, can't, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this anymore." She was yeah. just giggling to death. Yeah, so. she she basically said she was stoned. Yeah, she, she was like, "Whoa, guys, I'm way too high." So yeah. yeah, I mean, and I think that's that's the thing about marijuana is that it doesn't give you a false sense of courage. Or a false sense of security that alcohol obviously does to people right. all the time. Hey, watch this. Hey, <laughs> check this out. I'm going to go beat him up. I can totally do that because I'm drunk. Yeah. So a lot of different things. We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts as well. In fact, Carlos has been doing some research about the the larger war on drugs. We'll take this and, and go a little bit wider scope here in a little bit. Your thoughts are welcome. 855-450 free. And maybe we'll talk more about driving stone. It's Free Talk Live. Do you have question? Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. 
A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Goplock.org slash pivothead. To ensure that a record of the truth of police interactions exists and is accessible, we each need to fill. That's why we're happy to announce the Accountability Through Transparency video contest the winner of which will receive a pair of pivot head sunglasses. For more information and to submit your video entry, go to cutblock.org slash pivot head. One, document with a camera, a police employee exhibiting double standards or the standards we expect them to live up to. This can be done while on foot, during a vehicle stop, while submitting an open records request, etc. Two, upload your video to your YouTube channel. Three, fill out the form at cutblock.org slash pivot head by the deadline of midnight Eastern Standard Time, May 23rd, 2014. Four, the winner chosen by contest sponsors will be notified by email and the Pivot Head sunglasses will be shipped once a mailing address is received. Coplock.org slash Pivot Head. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves here toll free, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. All of the features are free on our site. So please enjoy and share. Share Free Talk Live episodes on your Facebook profile or Twitter or wherever it is that you spend time online. Is Facebook where people still spend time online? Is it still the hot place or have the have the youngins moved somewhere else now? I keep hearing the youngins have moved someplace else, but I don't know where it is, and I don't really care. <laughs> they can go have their little fun wherever they're having their fun. I certainly spend a lot of time on Facebook. Facebook and Twitter are pretty much still the still? main spots. Okay. I mean, Google Plus is trying, and Google Plus is way better as far as just a platform is concerned. These things like Google Hangouts, which is a way better version of Skype. 
There's all these great programs in there. They just can't seem to make it budge. Yeah. It's mostly comp side type people that are in, in Google Plus and things I've, like that. I've heard, but we post pretty much everything on Google Plus, and oh, I'm I sure never see a response. I'm sure there's nothing. Yeah. Like Because like Google Hangouts, it allows it so you could have 10 different people on a Skype chat that immediately streams to YouTube and everyone can watch it. It's like you stream That's but without awesome. the commercials. And no one's using it. You know, so it's just too bad. But, you know, Facebook is still kind of the thing for right now. Lisa. Hear that, Ian? We could uh, be doing, we wouldn't even have to do all that stuff with the camera that we had. Just run it right through Google Hangouts. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to cashintocoins.com, it's the easiest way to get Bitcoins. I, if you've been heard about Bitcoins, they're getting really exciting. Uh, you know, lots of lots of press. And I think Bitcoins are poised to move upward here shortly. That's just my opinion. Um, you know, take it for what it's worth. But if you want to get some Bitcoins, go to cashintocoins.com. The instructions there are clear. And, uh, they're easy, safe, fast, legal, inexpensive. Customer service is their top priority over there at cashintocoins.com. You can use a money order, check, wire transfer, however you want to go about it. They make it easy for you. The rates are great. As a matter of fact, orders under $40 carry no fee. Because they want you to get Bitcoins. They're as excited about Bitcoins as I am at, over at cashintocoins.com. Go to cashintocoins.com to get your Bitcoins. So our toll-free number is 855-453. We were talking about stoned driving as one of the concerns that a lot of people have with the idea of legalizing cannabis. As though people who are smoking cannabis are not driving now, <laughs> which of course they are, you know. All that changes is that it becomes legal to possess it. Yeah, at this uh, point, usu- the vast majority of cases that where they actually do get somebody for driving under the influence of marijuana, the person has said, "Officer, I am so stoned." <laughs> like they just don't. Know. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I didn't wasn't paying attention to what you're saying. I'm very stoned because you just they did, you know there's not much they can do about it. I suppose red eyes or something like that, and that's really all it comes down to. It's usually not terrible driving. And if it is terrible driving, it has to do with going under the speed limit or sitting at a stop line and forget or stop sign and forgetting to go. So there's a story over at Cannabis Culture magazine. And by the way, uh, Mark Emery, I saw an update on Facebook today. As you may recall, Mark is the publisher of Cannabis Culture magazine, or at least he was back when it was a magazine. It no longer is available in print form, but it still exists online. And uh, he and Jody Emery are the two in charge of that. But Mark has been in prison for the last several years now. Um, for the dastardly crime of selling marijuana seeds over the internet. And it sounds like he's going to be out in a month and a half or something like that. So very, very soon. Very exciting. Glad to hear that that's happening. Um, I guess it was inevitable, right? That he he will be released? Yeah. yeah, With a five-year sentence? Unless he dies in prison, it would have been inevitable. It just seems like... Wow, Mark Emery's in prison, and that's the kind of the way it went. And then he was gonna, he was in prison, and now he's gonna be out. That's good. You know, in the drug war, they always state that it's for you know protecting kids and making sure to increase our future and everything else. But really, throwing throwing this guy in prison while his family is out there, basically without an, another breadwinner, at least you're really screwing over the kids in this particular situation. And, the, and the, the, the the war on drugs has been a war on the family in so many different ways. It's so true, and I know you've got some interesting statistics on that. I'd like to dig into those when we get a chance. And we can also talk about driving while stoned. There's a breakdown here that the folks over at Cannabis Culture Magazine have put together of uh, multiple studies. We can talk about that or whatever's on your mind, like Ike in Connecticut. Ike, you're on Free Talk Live, listening online to LRN.FM. Yeah, I, I drove stone many times in high school with no problem. Sure, sure. I mean, there are people driving stone right now with yeah. uh, with no problem. There's people on the radio but, right now stoned. It's crazy. They're just doing plenty but, of uh, things. What, what, <laughs> what I was calling about is uh, I have a business idea, but I'm kind of uh, apprehensive about it. I want to ask you guys about it. All right, sure. Uh, I've been into guns and shooting like for a lot of my life, and I want to start a shooting range, but... I'm a voluntarist anarchist, and I'm kind of like I don't I don't want to be training, uh, you know, SWAT teams and military guys. So I don't know what I'm going to do. 
Well, it would have to be a private range, I would guess. Um, I mean, I'm just look. Normally, the the SWAT guys already have their range, right? They they either have their own or they have kind of a go to range where they're welcomed and given their own little special place. I remember down in Florida where I used to live, uh, the the range that my dad would take me to had a separate section. So there was a side on the right hand side, the larger side for all the regulars. And then the side on the left-hand side was for law enforcement only. So odds are good. They're already all set, and they're probably not going to be coming knocking. But if they did, you would just tell them it's private property, and uh, we don't want your kind around here. Or you could even make it a little bit more elusive than that. If you have, say, you're sending for private love and say, hey, we did this quick little background check. All you got to do is answer these particular questions. If it says military police, be like, oh, I'm sorry, this didn't work out, yep. yada, yada, yada. I mean, yeah, that would be yeah, a yeah, but- way of doing it. But my problem is that a lot of the customers that would be taking, you know, an advanced shooting course, a lot of them would probably be military and police. And then they go tell all their friends, oh, he doesn't support the troops. He doesn't support the, the police. Well, right. Oh, I think you've set up oh, set yeah, yourself a up point. a very difficult situation yeah. here. If you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna do anything that has to do with firearms, and you're gonna say, "Up, oh, yep, I'm not serving any active duty military or um, police officers," you're gonna have a very it, it, it's it ain't gonna go well. I'm setting up a vegan restaurant, and no liberals allowed. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> it's gonna be it's tough. Um, that's you know kind of the way it is. I would in, instead of excluding people, and I understand your reticence to uh, to training people that maybe use. Uh, you know, use their skills in some way you wish they wouldn't. But I would say that the the best thing to do in this circumstance is to set up, be a pillar of uh, of the community, and you know, talk to people, share your insights with them, try to you know, try to communicate with them why you think your philosophy in any given way is better than their philosophy. Now, maybe you could charge them more. I can tell you that when <laughs> when dealing with somebody who receives financial compensation for their ideas, suddenly they get much more difficult to convince of things. Like, for instance, I'm just going to use, you know, I'm going to use a sports analogy here because it's, uh, you know, in many ways people look at political philosophies in that way. But, you know, if you're trying to convince a Yankees uh, team manager that the Red Sox is a superior team, it's going to be a tough time. Sure. Because they're compensated to be a Yankees player. And... You know, when you tr- start telling a law enforcement officer that, look, I think that, uh, you know, I, th- I think really your job, um, you benefit from a great deal from the privilege of monopoly and that we'd be better off if, uh, you know, your your union was essentially your union's monopoly was essentially broken up and you had to compete in the marketplace with other people to provide pr- protection services. And that could very well mean a cut and pay for you. Well. Yeah, uh, just offer the yeah. opposite of a veteran's discount, and you'll be good to go. <laughs> well, I, I think that once the – I mean, look, Mark, I get where you're coming from, but if he starts having conversations with uh, the guys where good. he's where he's you know at this range and maybe he – even if he waits six months or whatever until he feels like he's established a good relationship, it still could very well get around that, oh, this guy, oh, he's one of those you know freedom people. Yeah, and a lot of oh- – a lot of the uh, a lot of the shooting courses are usually several days, so the guys are just sitting around at night hanging out. You know, so it's obviously going to come up. Yeah, it's you're right. It's a tough situation, and if anybody has any recommendations, please feel free to call in for Ike. You know, maybe it's not. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks for the call, and let us know how it goes if you decide to ro- uh, roll through with it. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's the toll free number. You got any suggestions for Ike? Can he make that business work without pandering? to the troops and the cops. It's Free Talk Live. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, Call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial, 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. 
You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. It's the Onion Radio News. A spokeswoman gives birth to a spokeschild. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Tacoma spokeswoman Tammy Barker became the proud mother of a bouncing baby spokeschild last night. According to spokespeople, Barker, a spokeswoman for a Tacoma-based pharmaceutical firm, the birthing process was a major success. Peter Wahlberg, spokesman for Tammy's husband Phil, had this to say. At 9.17 p.m. last night, an eight-and-a-half-month-old spokes fetus was delivered alive and through the miracle of birth became a seven-pound, six-ounce spokes child. Spokes father and spokes mother are doing fine. Spokeswoman Barker is expected to be released from St. Robert's Hospital tomorrow. The spokes child will remain in the hospital's media care unit for several weeks of training. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Take control of the airwaves. Just dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. Whether you want to comment on cannabis use and driving, or the last caller we had asked a question about uh, being a, an operator of a shooting range. He's talking about opening up his own shooting range, but he feels uncomfortable with doing business with people who work for the police or are active military because he doesn't want to encourage them to you know be better at using weapons to where they can then be better at oppressing people. Uh, essentially. And so I can understand the frustration there. But the question is, is it possible to have a profitable shooting range based on only private sales, only private uh, people coming through and doing business there? That's running up a muddy hill. I mean, that's going to be incredibly difficult to be able to make money off that. It's hard enough to just make money off a normal gun range as far as fees are concerned and everything else. So if you're also eliminating a huge chunk of the people who are going to be coming there, might not be the best move. I mean, I like the idea, but I'm just saying on a practicality level, I couldn't It'd be hard to see it working. Well, the good news is it probably wouldn't take a whole lot of money to to find out, right? I mean, a, a gun range. You don't really have to have your outdoors. You just need a, a place for people. Not to, every gun range is outdoors. Be, As a matter of fact, the popular ones seem to be indoors. I understand that, but he didn't say that it was going to be an indoor range. Okay. So if, if we're talking about just trying something out as a business— 
having a gun range outdoors probably isn't going to be the most expensive of investments. I mean, you're going to have to buy the land. You're going to have to spend some time, you know, making sure there's a nice berm of sand or something like Hopefully that. Hopefully you can rent one that went out of business. Yeah. yeah. Maybe or whatever. But my point being that, you know, this isn't a big complicated facility. I mean, the gun range that I went to down in Florida, there was a place where people would set their guns and their stuff. Plywood. You know, there was some sort of wood covering over that. So, you know, if it Tin. was raining, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, this wasn't a complicated. There was a little office in the middle. And, and that was it uh, in par- parking, basically. So it wouldn't be a huge investment, especially if you already have the land. I mean, if he's already sitting on some land and nothing's being done with it. and yeah, I'd love enough- to see him test it out and yeah. see what the results were. I mean, it's his money, not mine. So Because the word's going to get around. I mean, even if you are allowing these guys in and then you just start talking, eventually if you express your opinion to enough of them about how you you know might not agree with the war on drugs or whatever it is that you know, some of the things that they're doing – as police officers, word's going to get around that, uh, you know, oh, the guy that owns such and such a place, he's he's a critic. And they'll probably pull their business then anyway. So Probably true. You may be better off just just cutting them out in, in the, uh, the initial phases. But regardless, it would be interesting, and maybe we'll find out more over time about that. So Cannabis Culture Magazine, as I mentioned previously, since we brought up in our larger discussion about marijuana in Colorado and how things are going pretty well there with sales uh, and the the legalization of it. What about the driving? Because whenever you propose legalizing marijuana, and it still needs to be proposed in 48 other states— uh, the, the the always the people who support you the war on drugs— can't legalize marijuana because people would drive stoned. Which they're as doing though tonight. people aren't driving stone now, right. and as though um, you would use that as an excuse to not legalize alcohol. So here's a, uh, I guess, a story from Cannabis Culture magazine that addresses this, uh, circa 2005, uh, and it, it goes through several studies and looks at them, and what did they find about marijuana use in driving? Well, the effects on driving performance of marijuana use have been extensively researched over the last 20 years, and all major studies show that marijuana consumption has little or no effect on driving ability and may actually reduce accidents. Here's a summary of the biggest studies through 2005 uh, into pot use and driving. In 1983, a study by the U.S. National Highway Transportation Safety Administration concluded that the only significant effect of cannabis use was slower driving, arguably a positive effect of driving while high. Uh, Ten years later, a comprehensive 1992 NHTSA study revealed that pot is rarely involved in driving accidents except when combined with alcohol. The study concluded that, quote, THC-only drivers had an accident responsibility rate below that of drug-free drivers. So there's one study, Mark. I would we think that they would concentrate. Yeah, well, well I get it. Okay, great. So we, what we were saying earlier, or you, what you I were thought saying that, earlier, Yeah, I thought it was uh, slightly... Uh, They were slightly more distracted, but apparently not. The study was buried for six years, by the way, and not released until 1998. A 1993 NHTSA, this is all the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration study, closed, uh, dosed rather, Dutch drivers with THC and tested them on real Dutch roads. It concluded that THC caused no impairment except for a slight deficiency in the driver's ability to, quote, maintain a steady lateral position on the road, unquote. This means that the THC-dosed drivers had a little trouble staying smack in the center of their lanes, but showed no other problems. The study noted that the effects of even high doses of THC were far less than that of alcohol or many prescription drugs. The study concluded that, quote, THC's adverse effects on driving performance appear relatively small, unquote. Now, there's more studies here, but of course, none of this information is taken into effect when the discussions are had uh, in front of a state legislature. There, it's all about fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and casting marijuana users as uh, possible dangers on the road. Just the fact that someone somewhere could have a bad experience while driving on marijuana is, of course, to them enough reason to go ahead and restrict and give the police even more DUI uh, powers than ever before, including the ability to draw blood from people, which to me I find incredibly invasive and frightening. Uh, but there's more. A, yeah, massive, I mean, a police officer isn't hired to be a phlebotomist and shouldn't be doing that job. A massive 1998 study by the, <clears throat> by the University of Adelaide and Transport South Australia, that's the Australian DOT I believe, uh, examined blood samples from drivers involved in 2,500 accidents. It found that drivers with only cannabis in their system were slightly less likely to cause accidents than those without. 
Drivers with both marijuana and alcohol did have a high accident responsibility rate. The report concluded, quote, there was no indication that marijuana by itself was a cause of fatal accidents. So there again, in this massive study of 2,500 uh, drivers involved in accidents, that marijuana-only users were actually slightly less likely to cause accidents than those who had not. Hmm. So marijuana. smoking pot before driving makes it more fun and safer. That's oh what the That's studies great. are suggesting. In Canada, 19- I'm not suggesting that. <laughs> in 1999, University of Toronto meta-analysis of studies into pot and driving showed that drivers who consumed a moderate amount of pot typically refrained from passing cars and drove at a more consistent speed, less likely to take a risk, it sounds like. Uh, the analysis also confirmed that marijuana taken alone does not increase a driver's risk of causing an accident. A major study done by the UK Transport Research Laboratory in 2000 found that drivers under the influence of cannabis were more cautious and less likely to drive dangerously. The study examined the effects of marijuana use on drivers through four weeks of tests on driving simulators. The study was commissioned specifically to show that marijuana was impairing, and the British government was embarrassed with the study's conclusion that, quote, marijuana users drive more safely under the influence of cannabis, Jeez. unquote. According to the Cannabis and Driving Report, a comprehensive literature review published in 2000 by the UK Department of Tra uh, Transportation said, quote, the majority of evidence suggests that cannabis use may result in a lower risk of accident culpability. And the Canadian Senate issued a major report into all aspects of marijuana in 2002. Their chapter on driving under the influence of cannabis concludes that, quote, cannabis alone, particularly in low doses, has little effect on the skills involved in automobile driving. And finally, the most recent study into drugs and driving, again, by the publishing date of this article, which was 2005, published in the July 2004 Journal of Accident Analysis and Prevention. Researchers at the Dutch Institute for Road Safety Research analyzed blood tests from those in traffic accidents and found that even people with blood alcohol between 0.5% and 08 that's below the below, legal limit, yeah. had a five-fold increase in the risk of serious accident. Drivers above the legal alcohol limit you know, were 15 ma times more. MAD, Mothers Against Drug Drivers, um, actually is trying to lower the limit from 0.08 to 0.06. Interesting. In, um, some, and there are the quoting numbers like this that, in fact, uh, you know, a alcohol levels in your blood from you know at this point are still dangerous i wonder if they'd be willing to uh, you know negotiate hey uh, well, hey wait hey, hey since we know that uh, what the, the area we're talking about here from 0.06 to 0 0.08 uh, certainly does um is dangerous and as a matter of fact it's five times as dangerous as uh as stone driving then are do you want to legalize stone driving and you know they'll just of course freak out and get all befuddled at that point Drivers above the legal alcohol limit were 15 times more likely to have a collision. Drugs like Valium and Rohypnol produced results similar to alcohol, while cocaine and opiates showed only a small but not statistically significant increase in accident risk. And finally, for the marijuana-only users, well, the results showed absolutely no increased risk of accidents at all. Now, that doesn't mean you won't find somebody who's gotten into an accident somewhere after having smoked cannabis. But statistics like that, or case studies rather, just looking at one example of one person's story or experience, that's not scientific. That's just to create emotion in people and get them thinking that something needs to happen here. All the studies that have looked at large numbers of people and stone driving show that it's actually pretty safe. More coming up here in moments. Hour 3 is next. Free Talk Live. What if humans found a habitable planet, set up housekeeping, and then got left alone by Earth and its big government? Well, that happened in Freehold, Michael Z. Williamson's seminal work. Now available for the first time in a signed, limited hardback edition. Other books in this series are also available in paperback. I cannot recommend a modern fiction work more highly than Freehold. Earth might have left Freehold alone, but it doesn't stay that way. It's war. Get your copy right now at all major booksellers and shop.freetalklive.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. 
There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, May 19, 2014. Gold opened today, $1,304, silver opened at $19.60, and Bitcoin is trading at $446.68. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Bitmain Technology, creators of the Antminer S1 180 Gigahash Bitcoin Miner. No pre-order, ships on time, and sometimes it's early. Buy yours today, bitmaintech.com, or give them a call, 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online, affordablesound.com or call them up, 512-459-5253. In the news, draft legislation submitted to the Russian Parliament Wednesday would allow criminal prosecution against the producers of genetically modified organisms. According to Russia Today, the proposal would amend Russia's current law regulating GMOs, allowing a criminal case against a company responsible for creation of a product harmful to health or the environment. The bill's sponsor says such punishment could be comparable to that of terrorists if the perpetrators act knowingly and hurt many people. Militarization of law enforcement has become an American staple. Even rural communities with small populations are being given military-style tactical equipment absolutely free, including ballistic armored vehicles. A small Iowa town is the latest community to receive one, despite citizen opposition. The Marshalltown City Council has approved a measure 4-3 to three to acquire a $500,000 armored vehicle to be shipped from Sealy, Texas. Councilman Leon Lamer said he received more than 25 phone calls from protesting citizens, yet the acquisition was still approved. The United States has announced that unmanned and unarmed drones are watching an area of Nigeria to assist with rescue efforts of more than 200 teenage girls reportedly kidnapped by the militant group Boko Haram. The announcement comes as the United States military announced that it will be sending a small amount of troops to Nigeria. Both Democrat and Republican senators have discussed sending special forces to fight to find the girls. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And support comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Take action and join for free to gain community support and protection. Online at accountableauthority.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, May 19, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. May has been a busy month for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Breitbart News reported the USDA is seeking to purchase body armor that's gender-specific, lightweight, and having trauma plate pad concealable carrier in a May 7 solicitation. The request also includes tactical and ballistic resistant vests. Then on May 15th, Breitbart reported on a USDA solicitation seeking to purchase submachine guns with 30-round magazines. According to the Washington Times, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement in 2013 released thousands of illegal immigrants that were convicted of violent crimes, including murder. 
Breitbart, Texas, reached out to several ICE officials requesting information regarding the release of criminal illegal immigrants and also on the agency's detention and release policies. ICE officials refused to answer and confirmed they'd been given specific instructions not to comment on that report. A team of international scientists discovered a 13,000-year-old skeleton in an underwater Yucatan Peninsula cave. Researchers say the bones belong to a young girl, 15 or 16 years old, who seemingly fell to her death in a large pit. The skeleton was very well preserved due to the right water conditions and a lack of soil where she fell. Now, scientists believe the remains date back to the last ice age. Also found were the remains of an elephant-like creature, saber-toothed cats, and giant ground sloths. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, online at BraveNewBookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, May 19th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. According to a new report, the vast majority of Americans simply want to be safe, happy, rich, comfortable, entertained, thin, and romantically fulfilled. The Onion spoke to a few of the survey's respondents who also claimed they want to be healthy, fulfilled, and successful, and energized at all times. All I want is a low-stress job, a nice house, affordable health care, and low gas prices, you know? It would be nice to have a 35-hour work week, delicious food that's actually good for me, strong friendships, and free high-speed Wi-Fi wherever I go. I think I'm entitled to wealth, love, cheap education, a fair legal process. According to the survey, 63% of all Americans want their summers to be hot but not too hot. 85% want the government to stop all wars and world hunger and make quick and easy weight loss possible. 93% want to be emotionally satisfied, plus a soulmate, unconditional love from their parents, and a big happy dog. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, take control of the airwaves here. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And that toll free number is brought to you by ProXPN. Tonight with you in the studio, Ian here. And Carlos. And Mark. Carlos is here courtesy of his website and radio show and also YouTube uh, show, Truth Over Comfort. Dot net is where you can go to get more of Carlos. That's truthovercomfort.net as we go back to the phones and to the fun. And then Carlos will tell, uh, tell us more about a recent piece that he published about the war on drugs. We've been talking about cannabis legalization and driving while stoned. We'll go a little, a little larger in perspective and look at the entire war on drugs, which, of course, the war on cannabis is a good chunk of. But let's go to Jeremy first in Tucson. Jeremy, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Carlos and Mark. Hey, no, this is uh, Jimmy. Uh, hello, Ian, Carlos, Mark. Hi, Jeremy. Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, I'm uh, sorry, Jimmy. Jimmy, that's all right, man. I mean, it happens, you know. Hey, uh, at what age do you think you should start letting your kids handle snakes? <laughs> well, I don't know. Usually kids handle snakes without permission. Is this snakes before or after being in the freezer? That's really the question here. Well, no, I'm saying like at the church, you know? <laughs> <laughs> On Free Talk Live, I can categorically uh, say that we do not endorse children hand handling snakes for religious purposes. Yeah, but at what age should What a, a controversial child? statement there, Mark. I, You're just crazy. You're living on the edge here. I like 10 years. I said, man, you're crazy. You know, like, I, think, I think four and six are... Plenty old enough to handle these things. <laughs> Are these kids you're trying to get rid of? I'm a little bit confused here. No, no, man. These are my babies. You know, well, obviously, I would give them the snakes medicinal marijuana. You know, they'd be, they'd be relaxed. Is it kind of like a cat where you blow it in their ear? I didn't blow nothing, Mark. I don't like when you use that kind of language on me. I don't know if snakes have ears. So there, there's a really interesting thing when it comes to the religious snake charming thing. Because, yeah, it's a thing to essentially you take your snake, right? And you know the ones who are like, with the power of prayer, this won't bite me, right? 
So yeah, that doesn't always work. Well, no, no, no. Check this out. They stick the snake in the freezer, right? So it it cools it down, calm, and everything else. Mm -hmm. The thing is, though, the more and more it dethaws, the worse it gets. So the least faithful end up getting bit because they get in the back of the line. Oh. Yeah. yeah. See, it's working on every level. It's awesome. Uh, Jimmy, any other thoughts you want to share? I'm not putting my I'm not putting my kids in a freezer, Carlos. I don't know what you're talking about. Thanks you, for the call, Jimmy. You were just I on it tonight, it. Jimmy. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, Very funny petered, man. I like him. Kind of petered out a little bit toward the end there. Yeah. But it was good. It was good. I liked it. Thanks he's, for the call. He's done it a couple of times now. I think it's pretty good. No, yeah, he's one of our funnier callers, actually. 855-453-FREE. That is the toll-free number here tonight. War on drugs. A war on our family members. It's something we've been saying for years here on Free Talk Live. And anybody that can look at this issue... Uh, can I think see that that is the case? They can, uh, especially if they've had a family member who's been arrested. And as time goes on, more and more of us have had family or a close lot of people friends been arrested or close friends to us uh, have a, an encounter with the drug warriors that may have led them to a jail cell, and that is a real eye opener for a lot of people. So, what did you uh, create about this? Okay, so I made a presentation called "The War on Drugs Is a War on the Family." So, the War on Drugs, just like many other progressive type of agendas, are essentially all about protecting the children and protecting the poor from themselves that's basically the general message it's always given for everything right so whenever a war a real war starts you're like well we got to protect the kids in this other country so we need to annihilate a million other parents so the war on drugs has resulted in a similar case so presently there are 2.7 million children are growing up in u.s households in which one or more parents are incarcerated 2.7 million yes kids mm-hmm. Uh, yes, and okay. two thirds of those parents are incarcerated for non-violent offenses, primarily drug offenses, right? Or in sure. females' cases, generally prostitution. Now, one in nine black children has an incarcerated parent, compared to one in twenty-eight Latino children and one in fifty-seven white kids. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, that's a big difference. So it averages out to about one in every twenty-eight children in the U.S., which is more than three point six. This is about a Latino. We're all we all average out to a Latino. Yeah. We- <laughs> Well, we anyway. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I just saw the comparison. <laughs> and, anyway, so so that's one in every twenty children in the U.S. right now. Actually, this stat is of uh, it's a 2010, right? So just 25 years ago, that was one in 125 per capita. So compare so take the a look numbers. At it. Okay, one in 28 right? versus uh, one in 125. 25 years. And ago. we're talking about Latino. No, 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 that's no, 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 average. on average. average. Okay. On average. The average child um, that's in, from a home that has one incarcerated parent. Got it. Yeah. And, it's huge. Yeah, and when you, when you really try to kind of conceptualize that and you see the massive toll it's done, I mean, when we're talking about race and dealing with race and dealing with racism, the, the central, one of the biggest things in regards to racism is the war on drugs, how they purposely go after black communities and black parents and things like that. It's it's. it's Occurring on a constant basis. So whenever I hear about like the Clippers owner saying one, s- telling his wife that she's allowed to have sex with black guys, just don't take pictures with them, and people are making a huge deal about Girlfriend. it, and, and yeah, and able to feel like they're huge, awesome people because look, we're taking a stand, but then ignoring things like the war on drugs, which has mm-hmm. led to what uh, five hundred thousand uh, uh, black uh, male parents who are in prison right now that are not around their kids are not able to support them. But supposedly that's going to help them out in some way. Right. That's some, it's somehow better to take dad or mom and put them in a jail cell. And that's going to help them because then dad's not around smoking a joint. Oftentimes, or what? you'll find that the people that are most worried about the family would be least worried about the war on drugs. Would you say that's a fair statement? Most those, worried about the family would be least worried about right. the war on drugs. Those that would call in and say, there's a war on the family. Um, you know, people that w- I would get think this. they yeah. would support the war on drugs, those people. Right, that's what I mean. They're yeah. least likely to be worried about the, the war on drugs. So, Oh, meaning as a bad thing. Right. I and see. so it's possible that the war on drugs might be worse for the family than divorce, or at least on the scale of what's worst for the family. What's, what's the bad, you know, what the bad things for families are among them the war on drugs. Well, yeah. I mean, it is absolutely up there. So one of the best ways to be able to test whether or not a child is going to end up being an empathetic individual, it's whether or not they're raised with a father in the home. So what's a really good way of preventing a father from being in the home? Throw them in jail, folks. <laughs> and another thing that um, needs to be considered here is, is what are the effects for people who aren't in jail? Um, what about the, as I, I know that many, many times you can't get a, uh, uh, a college loan if you've been, have, have a drug conviction. Um, 
there's oftentimes people will find lower levels of employment because they have some kind of conviction or another. Um, so, you know, how do these affect families too? earning power and um, that sort of thing? Yeah, it, it, it's absolutely it's wrecking on every single level, just especially just on an emotional level about how you decide to view society in general. You know, the quickest way you can ensure that more and more people are going to be becoming libertarians is if you keep this this war on drugs charade to keep going on. It's true. Because as the Internet is, is is booming and more and more people are able to understand what's really going on here, the more people are going to reflect and go, wow, this is a terrible idea. I did post today uh, to my own Facebook. Uh, there's a image that CopBlock.org posted today where they're celebrating the— the initial claim was they were the number one police-related website. Since that claim was made, someone did find that Cops, the television show, has more likes. Uh, <laughs> but the number one liked, uh, they claimed they were the number one most liked on Facebook, and they were comparing themselves to these uh, kind of sites that are all about police. Like so they're police the number one, one um, police-related Facebook page that isn't Cops, the television show. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, so they It's just, still a hell of a claim. It's a big deal. They've got over half a million likes now, and they've been growing- And how much does dr- Cops have? Dramatically, uh, like 1.7 million or yeah, something that's like a that. But a lot of people that. watch Cops aren't pro-Cops. They just like that's to watch- That's true, yeah. Poor white people and, and, uh, and wife beaters get arrested. Yeah, there's there's a lot of silly stuff that happens on Cops. I've seen it. And pretty much everyone's drunk on there, by the way. They're generally not <laughs> no. high. I, I, I do not envy police their jobs. Well, right. I mean, no, no, no. no cops editor is going to put a, a scene in where somebody knows their rights. That's not going to happen on cops. No, unless they start abusing the guy for knowing his rights. Then they're like, well, he deserved it because he's one of them leftists. And honestly, I haven't watched the show in a decade. So yeah, I Is think it still around? I think it is. Oh, wow. I believe it's one of the longest running shows on on television. That sounds about right. It's easy to produce. Is all you do is send a camera crew with a bunch of uh, police, and then you you know yeah. you get yourself a show, some editing. Yeah, true. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of editing involved because I mean a, a a night with a cam- a camera crew out with a cop may be uneventful. It just depends on where you are and what the calls are. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That is the Pro XPN toll free line. You can take control of the airwaves here. And so, again, congratulations to copblock.org for surpassing half a million likes on Facebook. Pretty awesome. We're coming up here. You can take control of the airwaves on Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Summer is almost here, which means it's time to get out and play. And at the Guitar Center Memorial Day Sale, you'll find some of our lowest prices of the year on the best gear throughout the store. And with deals like your choice of two guitar stands or wall hooks for 10 bucks, or two pairs of Vader drumsticks for 5 bucks, or three sets of Ernie Ball electric guitar strings for 10 bucks, the only question is, where will you play? Guitar Center's Memorial Day Sale, now through Monday, in-store and online. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. 
From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of these airwaves here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, possible new curfew for... Certain people will uh, tell you about that. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number, and you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features on the site. They are totally free, unlike those other talk show hosts who want to charge you for accessing their sites. Again, freetalklive.com. Don't you want to try the delicious coffee that I drink every day? I talk about BuzzBox coffee here on the air on a pretty regular basis, and it is really awesome coffee. I just got into my new shipment today, and... As, as a matter of fact, they have new two-pound bags. Ooh. You know, eh, it's it's cool because now they're using less packaging. But any anyway, um, it's really awesome coffee, and you can get a free pound by simply going to coffee.freetalklive.com. You sign up for the subscription there. You can cancel it at any time. But if you continue to get your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, and I'm and I've got to say, it's great. I don't have to think about coffee anymore. It just comes in the mail, and it's taken care of. And get a little more than you need, because if you end up with an extra pound at some point or another, you can give it as a gift. So for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we're able to give another micro loan to another family around the world so that they can buy whatever it is they need to start their own business and strike out on their own, make their own money, get that hand up that they need, not a handout. It's the proverbial teaching them to fish rather than uh, gi- giving them a fish so they eat for a day. I think this is the best way to do it. And you can help by going to coffee.freetalklive.com and getting your free pound to start with. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, we're going to continue more with Carlos, uh, who has really crunched some numbers and looked at some details on the war on drugs. He says it's a war against families. We'll continue with that here. But James is on the line first in Arizona. James, you're on Free Talk Live. James yeah. in Arizona. Go ahead. Thanks to the miracle of the Internet, I got to find out I have a mutual friend with Mark and Stephanie and Brian named Jimmy. And they had a great laugh at my expense being the butt of all his cracker jokes. He just called yesterday. in just now. Yeah, he's really I, know, nice guy. I, like I him. called in, Mark. I wanted Ian to ask him to call back in. That's what I asked your call screener to do because oh. I wanted to talk to Jimmy, my friend, straight up. But, <laughs> so I'm confused. I'm confused, uh, James. You're saying that Jimmy, you actually know him in real life from or from Facebook or what? It's a bit. Yeah, he's. I don't believe Jimmy is for real even today. No. But that's all good. That you didn't get the joke that I have to explain it to you. <laughs> don't worry, Wit. It's that way. With, I'm sorry. It's, don't worry about it, James. This, he's that way with everybody. Yeah. Well, everybody knows Jimmy's well, a joke, but no one's perhaps, real sure about perhaps, you, Wit. Perhaps somebody amongst us, Mark, smokes too much dope. But may I? <laughs> may I uh, okay, he gets an extra thirty seconds for that joke. The good laughs that you had with Jimmy yesterday. I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars for every time but once that I ever said invoked the name Jesus on Free Talk Live. I don't know. Let alone, I'll give you 100,000 times for every time I ever use the word saves. 
on Free Talk Saved. Live. But during your call, Saved. Saved. during Jimmy's call yesterday, Stephanie and Brian and you all kept on using those two words. And the only time I ever used the word Jesus, Mark, and only once was in response to your profoundly stupid and illuminating and prejudicial question that you had. Like I said, you have a stereotypical mind. You're, the things you believe about me are set in stone, and they were set in stone before you ever heard my voice on Free Talk Live. So you call, like, can, you call like every day? Like this is your thing? Carlos, Carlos, may I say something fun that you said that was funny? So you call like every day? It was funny day. About when you were talking about the Lone Gun Ranger, you saying... They're, I'm with you. They're kind. They aren't wanted around here. You know, the cops and the robber killers or whatever you call them. I didn't the say army. that. I said that. Guys. Yeah. I know. Oh, you did, Ian. My bad, Los. I lock calls in every day, and his call, like every other one today, was really stupid and boring. I mean, dreadful, in fact. But he did say something funny about, I, I'm not a dog or a slave. I'm a man. That was kind of funny hearing him get to say that on Free Talk Live when he spoke for two segments about stuff that is retarded. Okay. okay. Straight up. Okay. James's but review of tonight's show. All right. Boring I'll, I'll talk and to retarded. You, talk to you later. Thanks, Thanks for the guy. Okay. So that guy calls in every... That's amazing. He, does, yeah. he has a lot of free time. I thought he had Free time good, for Free Talk Live. He had a pretty good joke tonight. I'm willing to, you know, go That ahead he said it. that Ian smokes weed? Yeah, like he's too stoned that's, or something. Oh, okay. That's very funny. It's fine. There's a lot of comic, I'll take comedy it. in his... I'll take it. Okay. You know, All I'm right. on the show with Ian on a pretty regular yeah, basis. Sounds, I don't get much for comedy. Sounds like an awesome human being that I definitely want to spend yeah, some time Yeah, he's a real with. winner. No, no, I can tell. I can smell the win. Oh, and he's a loving Christian, too, by the way. He loves to tout how Christian he is while at the same time advocating for the bombings of people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I don't know. Did he hear of the Crusades? I think there's a lot of loving Christians there, yeah, too. Yeah, I think he missed oh, that God, one. Now, this is going to be a week's worth of calls. <laughs> awesome. No, no, no. Right, because he loves to call after the fact. After something has already well, happened. Well, what else is he supposed to do at this point with the uh, with the you know the conversation going on? Like he it should is... get a life. So on to, <laughs> on, to, on to more interesting things. We were talking yes, about the war on drugs. So let's, let's go back to this. So we're we're basically the reason I, I bring up the war on drugs is because I talk a lot about the family and and trying to figure out the best ways that we can deal with child protective services. And so one of the points that I always bring up is eighty five percent of removals are not for physical or sexual abuse or anything else like that. It's generally for things like drug use. And so something that's Called Product. neglect. But it's called neglect. N- yeah. Now, the thing is, is that a lot of times people say, well, can a drug user be a good parent? And the thing is, the problem with the war on drugs is the fact that we're using the word drugs as if they're all the same. That's like stating, like, you know, all women are the same. You know, sure. Some are nice, some are pretty, some look like walruses. You know, it just kind of depends. There's many, many different types of women. There's many, many different types of drugs. But one of the main drugs that gets hit on a lot is LSD. You know, people think, oh, what well, causes these psychotropic uh, Hit on terrible in what schiz- way? Like just well, in the news or, or? On the news. Like people say like, oh, well, if you take LSD, you're going to see a hippo. You're going to jump off a building. Yeah. You're going to go crazy. And the thing is, there's no actual uh, facts behind it. In a 1960 study, LSD was given to 2,000 people, uh, half of whom were known to be either mentally ill or genetically predisposed to mental illness. Yikes. Only 0.13% of the test subjects exhibited any form of psychotic behavior. 013 0.13%. 0.13% of test subjects exhibited any form of psychotic behavior. And nearly all of those who did were already known to be psycho. Yeah, yeah. that's so a good word for it. The suggestion is, is that the psychos given LSD cease to be psycho? No, no, no. no. Well, as in they... There are people who already had psychotic behavior in the past, and whenever they're given on the LSD, they didn't have psychotic behavior this time, like okay. while on it, if that makes sense, right? Uh, I mean, is it then purported as a cure for psych- psychosis? No, no, no. It's, okay. they weren't, they're not always acting in a psychotic manner, Got but it. they've had psychotic episodes in the okay. past. Now, in comparison, alcohol is known by a large, larger percentage to cause psychotic behavior in people who are already having these issues. And similar finds... And nobody asks um, you know, whether a parent who has some drinks is a good or bad parent. Sure. I mean, that's almost never asked. No. And the thing is, is similar uh, studies were done in regards to PCP, also known as angel dust, as far as psychotic behavior is concerned as well. Again, negligible in comparison to alcohol. This goes the same with cocaine, which is the same thing as crack. I, mean, I know in the 80s they try to make it sound like crack was worse than coke. It's not. Being it's the same blackout drug. drunk is basically a psychotic break as far as I'm concerned yeah. because when you're blackout drunk, you do things you don't remember. You are not necessarily even you at that uh, at that point. I mean, there have been people who've been blackout drunk who have done some really frightening things and dangerous 
and scary things to people who were their friends. They never would have done that had they been in their normal condition. No. And it was because of alcohol. Yeah. There's well, more coming up here in moments. Hmm? They chose to drink it. I mean, they're responsible true. for their actions. They're responsible, they're still for, their responsible actions. for their actions, but it's still alcohol is still a terrible drug. But they it was I a mean, bad action in the first place. It's a total break from who they uh, who they are. I've, I've heard of this happening, and I've seen it. 855 450 free. Take control. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you are invited to take control of the airwaves toll-free. Bring up whatever you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That number brought to you by ProXPN. 
And again, the number 855-450-3733. You can connect with us on Skype, which I would prefer if you've got it, because Skype generally sounds better than your phone. You can use username lrn.fm to send a contact request first. It will be accepted probably within about 15 minutes. Usually whenever we go to our next break is when we'll check the Skype to see if there's any requests. So send your contact request along to username lrn.fm, and once you're accepted, it'll be easy for you to call us. Now, uh, sometimes you can use Skype on a mobile phone. Maybe you've got a smartphone, and you don't yet have Skype on there. It's on your home computer, but you haven't put it on your phone. If you put it on your phone, it'll actually upgrade the quality of your phone call to us if you're using Skype. If you just call us on the regular phone, it's going to sound like you're on a phone. If you call us on Skype, you'll sound better. Not quite like you're in a studio or anything, but it'll be better than phone quality. So uh, drop the Skype app on your favorite smartphone device. And while you're on your smartphone, if you want to learn how to listen to Free Talk Live to easily access our uh, our streams as well as the podcast and the webcam, you can go to our mobile site. Go to m.freetalklive.com. That's m like mobile freetalklive.com. We'll continue more on the war on drugs as a war on your family. We go to Skype first where Nathan is on the line in Texas. Nathan, you're on with Ian, Carlos, and Mark. Nathan, uh, Texas, going once. Nathan in Texas. Uh, good, good. Hello? Hey, we got you now. Go ahead. Oh, hey. Uh, my review for the show is it's an scintillating and exciting episode. Fantastic. Thanks. Um, scintillating, Carlos, that's you, a good one. I'm going to look yeah, that up. Car- Carlos mentioned uh, the effects of alcohol from some studies, and I've been... I've been interested in this topic and called in the past a few times because I had a, a relative, a grandfather who died of alcoholic liver disorder mm. or disease. Um, but I've had some trouble uh, finding, I guess, concrete information about it. Um, Carlos, you sound like a really hard numbers kind of guy. Um, do you know where I can uh, get more, you know, find out more about these studies and their effects on uh, alcohol's effects on physiology and on the brain and all that stuff. Absolutely. On my website, truthovercomfort.net, there is a, a, a t- subject title that says The War on Drugs, The War on the Family. I have, I think, over 30 studies in relation to the war on drugs and the effect of alcohol as far as lethality is concerned, the addictiveness of it, uh, numbers on the amount of people in jail. I kind of put it all together for anyone that wants to be able to use it, take it, do everything you want with it. So, yeah, it's all there. And I'm not sure it's it's also I'm not sure it's also just me. I get the impression that since alcohol is so accepted in our culture and other drugs are less accepted, that maybe there's less emphasis, I guess, on studies that would show its harmful effects. Like you mentioned the schizophrenia thing. I I'd never heard that before. Well, the studies the studies are 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 definitely out there. The thing is that the media always likes to pick which studies it wants to bring up and which ones it doesn't. So, and the media has a lot of beer sponsors. That's yeah, true. It, no, it's it's absolutely true. I mean, you know, Super Bowl is brought to you by beer. You know, like all these huge events that bring media companies in money. Professional sports are brought to you by beer. Yeah, all these all these different sports that bring you in, in money are, are alcohol. So, of course, they're not going to be doing that. Instead, they're going to say, like, oh, this one study says multivitamins are useless. So they'll bring up this one study that's terribly done regarding something that will make you healthy and then they'll never bring up any of the alcohol ones or anything like that and uh, in fact i'm looking at a, a one more study you can find on the website that alcohol outperformed cocaine and morphine in level of lethality as in alcohol Yay, was lethality. shown to be more dangerous than cocaine and america's favorite drug coffee was shown to be more dangerous than marijuana or lsd hmm. and you can find that on an actual government website I'm wondering how many people die from coffee or whatever. Well, I mean, well pretty much no one dies from LSD or marijuana. Yeah, so, so that's that's how it kind of works. If you have a heart-related like, condition yeah, it could and get then you. you drink some coffee, not a very good idea. Yeah, it could happen, especially if you have too much. And uh, I become very agitated and angry, um, so I could drive too quickly and get into a wreck mm, or something sure. if I was to have uh, <laughs> you know any kind of you know d- dose of caffeine. No. You see, that's it's always dose dependent, right? So if I don't have coffee in the morning, there's a very, very good chance if I drive, I'm going to be angry and lethargic at the same time. So it would be <laughs> terrible. Well, well, thanks a lot, and be careful with that box of BuzzBox coffee, Mark. Oh, I, mine's decaf, and I'm a mess without my decaf coffee in the morning. Oh, really? Yep. Nathan, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Let's go and continue. We've got Brad on the line. He's also on Skype. Go ahead, Brad. You're on the air. Hi. Hey. Um, I I was calling about LSD. Okay. Awesome. Tell me about it. Uh, Well, I've done plenty of it, and I think it's uh, kind of a good drug. What do you like about it? 
Uh, you see things that are there that you wouldn't normally see. Okay. Like what? New stuff. Um, you see electricity in the air. Um, It can be hard to describe, I imagine, a lot of the stuff you've seen. (laughs) Now, I have to say, I've taken LSD a number of times, and uh, but I've never taken more than one hit of LSD. How many hits have you taken at once, Brad? Because I've never seen the electricity in the air that's you know gone going further than I've ever gone. Uh, So, how many hits was the uh, the max that you took? And more importantly, did you just do some? (laughs) I just took one at a time. That was funny. One at a time. Wow. Now, when was this? When was your most recent trip? Um, it's back in the 70s. I wonder if it was better back then. I wonder if it you probably know, one, was. one dose of LSD was a higher dose in the 70s. Drugs then. are way better now. Like heroin is cleaner and cheaper than it was yeah, before the LSD's war on drugs. Yeah, LSD hard to find. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. It's actually easy to make in a lab. No, it is not easy to make in a lab. The, the LSD let's, is let's, made by a very, very select few. I got a basement a somewhere. Very, anyway, no, I'm just kidding. No, a, a LSD is made by a select few, a very small group of people worldwide. And uh, it, it, you have to be very good with, chemi- with chemistry to be able to do LSD. It's not like a lot of things where you can just follow instructions or whatever. Hmm. Yeah, well, back then it was good, and I can't find it anymore. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you how you can find it. you got to hang out with the young folk. You can find it, Brad, by going to the Silk Road, uh, and there's Silk Road 2.0, as it is called. There's also alternatives like the Agro Marketplace and the Black Market, uh, the Darknet of Tor, which is an anonymizing system for the Internet. Uh, these websites are only available through the Tor system, and you can purchase uh, LSD or what is purported to be LSD with uh, with Bitcoin. And so it's actually easier now, thanks to the Silk Road, to find LSD than it ever was before, because LSD has never, not in our lifetimes at least, uh, Carlos, you and I, uh, has ever been like one of the more popular drugs. No. It was certainly uh, in its heyday in the 1960s, the late 1960s, you know, Timothy Leary, these individuals. Brad, thanks for calling with your thoughts thoughts tonight i appreciate hearing from you at uh, 855 450 free but it's kind of you know it's it's petered out in its popularity yeah, psilocybin's much more popular as well as like mdma is, is still MDMA very, very very popular yeah. uh, marijuana obviously the most popular i think mdma is maybe second to that well and the thing is mdma another interesting drug something that was brought up to be you know the media was like oh it's just going to kill everyone and everything else no it doesn't it's it's not very dangerous whatsoever not, the, not only that it actually helps cure ptsd as yeah a the the concern with with MDMA is that the the next next few days your dopamine receptors are going to be a little bit shot, you know. Yeah, but I've for never people, people are suffering it. from like well, and again, it's it's. I think it's you have to take a relatively dependent. high dose for for to experience that. And sure, certainly, everybody's body is different. So what yeah. I experience might not be what you experience. But I've only ever taken a dose of MDMA, and of course, that varies. The amount of uh, milligrams per dose varies depending on the black market. But uh, I've never. Well, you mentioned the black market. I think it's very important to juxtapose the Silk Road or Silk Road 2.0 with the black market. And I think that one thing that needs to be understood is the sellers on Silk Road and many of these uh, dark web um, purveyors, they get a um, a rating, like an eBay rating, and you can give feedback and, and that kind of thing. And I think that that's. It's immensely valuable because when you're taking these illicit drugs, either that you get from the internet or wherever, you're taking something from somebody you don't don't have any like there's no there's no feedback loop for uh, drug dealers. Well, the, what the Silk Road does is actually starts a feedback loop, and then people you know there's there's customer service that goes into play where there isn't really that so much on the black market. No, you just have to hear from one of your friends, oh man, this stuff was awesome. And right. that's all you really Yeah, but got. even then you may not be talking about the actual the same product thing. as yeah, what, exactly. uh, what is advertised as. So for instance, when our friend Rich Paul got arrested for selling cannabis and purported LSD, it wasn't actually LSD. He says he didn't know that. Um, but it was a chemical that would make you trip. It just wasn't LSD. More coming up here in moments. You can take control. That's the risk of the black market. We can talk more about that in moments on Free Talk Live. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. 
AF Plus is an amazing proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial. 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com the TalkStream Live app for iPhone, iPad, and Android is the fastest and easiest way to access live talk radio anytime, anywhere. Download the free TalkStream Live app right now and see for yourself. You'll enjoy instant access to the best in live talk radio. Find your favorite shows and discover some new ones. The TalkStream Live app is available in the App Store, the Google Play Store, or visit TalkStreamLive.com. That's TalkStreamLive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The war on drugs, a war on families. And that's what uh, Carlos Morales, who is here with us from truthovercomfort.net, his most recent post on his website. I think that's your most recent post. Yeah, uh, it, should be, it should be probably the, the most recent one up there right now. That's what it's all about, and you can really dig into the numbers and the that he's been crunching that really show that this is not something that if you care about someone, you want to do to them. You don't want to put them, if they've got a problem with drugs, and there are plenty of people who do, putting them in a cage, taking them away from their families, that's not going to help. 
And we can continue on that uh, that thread. Also, your comments are welcome here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, by the way, this program is brought to you by Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. Uh, of course, I'm the executive producer of the film, and I'm really proud of this uh, this movie. It's a year's worth of activism uh, that happened here in New Hampshire. And Derek J, the subject, the star of the film, the director of the film, he is coming back he will be back in i think under a week's time here to new hampshire so awesome. if you've seen derek j's victimless crime spree you, you know that it it ends and i'm not spoiling anything i don't think by saying this but it uh, it ends with his exile from new hampshire and he's exiling himself for two years so it's a self-imposed exile and his two-year exile is about to be up in about one week so very excited that uh, Derek's going to be coming back. And check out the movie. You can watch it for free at victimlesscrimespree.com. It links over to its YouTube version where last I looked there were over 150,000 views. So check it out when you get a chance. It's a feature-length documentary film that really focuses on a lot of civil disobedience uh, that happened up here in New Hampshire over a one-year period of time, mostly in the uh, the Keene area. It's very exciting. Uh, it's a fun movie. It's a funny movie. It's also a sad movie. And I think it'll really... Uh, it'll really work your emotions. It, at least it, do, it does yeah, it was, with me. It was a really good movie. Whenever I watched it, that's how I first kind of heard about Derek J's, everything that occurred with him, and I really recommend it. It really shows how kind of insane victimless crimes are in general. Oh, yeah, and sure does. you kind of see the cops' reactions in these cases, and part of them are just, they're just mad. So they're like, okay, I'm mad. I'm going to arrest you now. Like a lot of it is just this utter frustration thing. Mm -hmm. And if you got a frustrated person who also has a monopoly on force and pseudo-heroism in order to back it, you're going to end up with some really disgusting actions, and Victimless Crime Spree really kind of demonstrates that in a really wonderful way. It sure does. It's a, I think it can be an eye-opener for some folks. At the very least, even if you're already a liberty-minded person, it'll be an entertaining hour and a half. Yeah. So go and check it out at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. As we continue here, uh, Carlos, you were telling us more about your feature piece over at Truth over comfort.net about the war on drugs yeah so you know we were, we were bringing up these statistics as far as how many uh children are now ending up with without a father in the home because of the war on drugs now if we also combine this with how many children are also being removed from homes because of their parents drug use or alleged drug use being thrown into these foster homes where as is already brought up they're seven eight times more likely to be abused than a normal household and six times more likely to die than if they stayed in an abusive household when you see all these things combining, there's no way you cannot look at that with any kind of eye whatsoever and not see that as detrimental uh, to human beings as a whole. This is, whenever we talk about the war on drugs, it's something we just think of the normal everyday pothead, but it's, it's really detrimental to everyone around us right now. It's hurting everyone in more ways than we can even think about. Well, wait, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a moment here. Are you saying, Carlos, that you think that keeping a meth-addicted father in a home is a good idea? What? <sighs> yeah, no. But uh, but I, I would also state that communities, uh, communities around the... Okay, excuse me. Families that are connected with a strong community can help deal with that situation better than Child Protective Services can. That's true. Yeah. So that's the main difference is, is here's the thing. I'm well aware that child abuse is occurring in the United States. It's happening all the time. The problem is, one, that Child Protective Services generally isn't dealing with a real physical abuse that's going on because a lot of times that's harder to prove than just a simple drug test. Mm. And another problem is happening with that, though, is that they're taking away the power from the individual to show up and go up to another person who's abusing their kid and go, hey, this is not the right way to be treating your child right now. Let's see if we can figure out another way of dealing with this. When you say they're taking away that power, you mean that they are supplanting it by, oh, well, we'll take care of this. Yeah. Child Protective Services has stepped in, so the neighbors and the friends, they don't feel like it's their obligation. They can just call somebody. Yeah. They don't have to actually have a conversation with someone. They don't have to bring up a difficult topic with a friend or a loved one. They can just make an anonymous phone call. Yeah, essentially. And that's that's the thing is that that's what the state does all the time. They monopolize and then they act like you couldn't have ever done anything before we came mm. here. Don't you think that, I mean, people, uh, touch, talking about people's uh, discipline of their children is so difficult um, that many people would just simply choose not to have the conversation rather than, um, you know, step in where they sort of felt like they had a social responsibility. Well, I think, I think, though, the way people are raised from the get-go also has to do with the way they end up treating other adults. 
public education is a perfect example. You never learn how to resolve conflicts with other individuals whenever you're in public school. Mm. You no, always you go, go to the teacher. You right? always go to the teacher. And that same kind of indoctrination is then works in society as a whole. You always go to the arbitrary authority that is being codified as the leader that we're being forced to fund. So it's this whole web of, of deceit and illusion that we're all living under, which is preventing anyone from being able to act in a really humane manner. And it's it's just awful. So public schooling really removes individuals' will and volition. It, it removes your want to actually deal with conflict at all because generally conflict is only dealt with in one of two ways. Either you say, you know what, I, I, that's too much of an issue, so I'm not even going to bring up my issue with them, or you just start yelling at them. You never yeah. figure out a... And a way to actually negotiate to get both of your interests to be met. I agree with you. However, um, and I like what you're saying about conflict resolution and public schools. I agree with you on that. What I kind of wonder here is is that it seems like the whole um, you know when, when it comes to child abuse, it's difficult to distinguish that from sort of physical discipline, right? Um, and how and, and uh, like at this point, people that believe in physical discipline, I believe in this culture, outnumber probably greatly, people who don't believe in physical discipline, especially those that have kids. So it can be difficult to um, sort of step in. I have a child. I don't, uh, you know, physically discipline my child. I don't spank them or anything like spank him or anything like that. But I wouldn't know what to do if I saw, I wouldn't, you know, if I saw a spanking going on, say in a parking lot of a grocery store, not like I spend a lot of time going to grocery stores, honestly. My wife takes care of most of that. But well, if Carlos I were to was talking that, about friends, right? Like people who are connected to the family, not just a stranger in a parking lot. Okay. Like the Free State Project is a perfect example of that, right? So if we're a tight knit community and we see, and there's maybe a family who's either, maybe they're dealing with a lot of different issues or, and, you know, because of stress and things like that, they end up taking out on other kids to go and to be able to have that conversation with those people. You know, when you're in a strong, tight knit community, it's a lot easier yeah. than whenever you're in, you're not in one of those particular situations. And the Free State Project is a, a really good situation for this because we're all kind of already agreeing on the non-aggression principle, and for the most part, we're all kind of agreeing that we probably shouldn't be getting the state involved in the first place. I'd agree with that. Yeah, it's true. In fact, there was one lady uh, up here in Keene who was a roommate of a couple who had a kid. And she, the lady, also had her own child. So a couple with a child and then a lady with a child. Uh, the lady with the child actually called CPS on the couple. And uh, it was because she didn't like how open they were with uh, sexuality in, in their home, basically. That was, you know, they're they're a little different than, you know, the average uh average parents might be and that made this lady uncomfortable so rather than having a conversation with them rather than you know having laying it out there how she feels or in anything like that she called cps on them and basically scared these folks away and so the community here um had a conversation with both of the the parties involved just to kind of try to straighten out what was actually going on and we ended up running the the woman out on a rail essentially like ran her out of town nobody wanted to help this lady after she called cps on these other folks well there's just a uh, lack of connected and compassionate communication that's occurring here so and again this by the this, way they all of them left town none of them yeah here i mean this happens this happens in like the workplace too you know, you'll be you'll be at a job and you're having an issue with someone that you're working with. So what do you do? You go gossip with your friends or you go tell the boss on them. So it's it's like kind of on Instead all fronts. Instead of talking to the person. Instead of just talking to the person, which can usually resolve the issue pretty, uh, pretty easily. And I think in regards to what we're talking about as far as hitting children is concerned... CPS has has done very very little to prevent actual spanking from occurring. You know what what has helped? People like Stefan Molyneux who make free YouTube videos who convince tens of thousands of parents out there not to do these things anymore. So rather than just always thinking, okay, well how do we stop abuse right now? You know, I have to run in the grocery store and immediately stop them. Instead, educating people has been even more influential than that. Carlos Morales with us tonight. Great job, by the way. I appreciate you coming Thanks. in on Free Talk Live. And check out his show, truthovercomfort.net. We will return tomorrow night. You can join us online in the meantime over at freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, 
government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, May 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.58 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,301 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $444. Antiwar.com reports, multiple strikes across Nigeria's northeastern state of Borno have left at least 49 people dead and many villages badly damaged, as Boko Haram continues its offensive against the region. Hit the hardest was the tiny village of Dalwa Masuba, which on Saturday saw Boko Haram members ambush vans carrying firewood, then attacking the village outright, burning much of it to the ground. 